You're gonna walk out like if you walked in me. You're gonna be Gathered at the highest thoughts Welcomed by a melody Anthem I have always known A song that's always been in me All glory and honor Dominion and power
Amen. Come on, stand to your feet, North Georgia Revival. Can we do that? Can we echo? Can we echo what the 24 elders are saying right now? Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Come on, one word, holy, 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 holy. Come on, cry it out, holy. Holy is the Lord, righteous and lovely. King Jesus, come, move in this house. Holy, 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 amen. Amen, take a moment, just love on some people around you. We have people from all over the nation with us tonight. The place is packed front to back, side to side. You look wonderful tonight. Anybody left over from the conference this weekend for such a time as this, make some noise. If you were here for such a time as this conference, you act like you almost got touched. You don't act like you got good and touched. Amen, amen. We just want to take a moment and greet all of you who are watching online, streaming in. Thank God for you. We thank God for the ISN Network, Sid Roth out of Charlotte, all the affiliate stations who make sure this goes live literally all over the world. Can we put our hands together and thank God for Sid Roth, the ISN Network. Welcome to week 320 of the North Georgia Revival. I'm going to go ahead and tell you what this team already knows. Tonight, legs will grow out. Deaf ears will hear, blind eyes will see, the lost will be found, prodigals will return, drug addicts will be born again, set free in one moment, one encounter. And that thing that has been tormenting you for so many years, the Lamb of God is about to torment it. Would you grab your phone real quick, get your phone. Grab your phone, go for your phone, get it out of your purse, your back pocket, wherever it is, get your phone out. I want to encourage you to go to Facebook, go to the North Georgia Revival and, and find the live feed right now and, and hit like or love or muy amor or whatever you do. I don't know what language you speak, but comment on it, do whatever, and then do us a favor. Check in to the North Georgia Revival. Go ahead and come out of the closet, let people know where you're hiding on Sunday night. Don't hide anymore. Let them know exactly where you are and you're loud and proud about it. I'm at the North Georgia Revival where the Spirit of the Lord is moving. Go ahead and check in and then hit that share button. There's a little button over to the right. Hit that share button. Let all your friends know and let them have access to what you have access to. Oh, that's good. That'll preach right there. Quit holding it, holding it back to ourselves. All right, now once you're done with that, would you go to Revelation 19? Revelation 19. Welcome to Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. This is the time 2,000 years ago where Jesus would have already raised Lazarus from the dead. He would have already healed lame and sick people, cleansed uh, lepers and things like that. And this is the moment where he climbed upon the back of a donkey and rode into Jerusalem. Very humble, very lowly, very meek. That's what we're celebrating, that, that triumphant entry into Jerusalem. In just a, four or five days, we'll commemorate Good Friday, the day he was beaten and crucified. And then, of course, two days after that, Sunday, he got up. <laughs> he got out. <laughs> so Revelation 19, are you there? there Revelation 19 verse 11 now I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse and he who sat on him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he judges and makes war he <laughs> he makes war his eyes were like a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns and he had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations. And he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the 
fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He wasn't a king, he is the king. He wasn't a Lord, he is the Lord. One, one moment he comes in the womb of a woman, then he comes through the city on the back of a donkey. But when he comes back next time, Bible says, hair white like wool, fire in his eyes, and a swift sword in his hand. He's ready to cut some things off. He comes to judge. And I'm telling you this very night, he comes riding in this room, victorious, powerful. He's ready to liberate some people, set some people free. Come on, how many of you need the Lord? I need him. I need him tonight. I need him more tonight than I did yesterday, last week, or week number one. Lord, on week 320, we say come in power, come in glory, just come. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord God Almighty. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. In Jesus' name, amen.
I say unto thee, if the young lions lack and suffer hunger, you won't ever lack when you seek my face. I will not withhold any good thing from thee, saith the Lord.
want you to close your eyes right now. I want you to lose sight of the people around you. I want you to dial in your focus. And I want us to sing, you deserve it, right there. And I want you to pour out your love on him. We're going to sing the song, you tell him how much you love him. You tell him how beautiful he is, how worthy. So as we sing it, talk to him. I know you feel unworthy, some of you, but talk to him. in every Tell him, tell him, tell him how great he is. Tell him how awesome he is. How beautiful. Father, we lift our hands tonight. We join with our brothers and sisters around the world. And we say you deserve it. Lord, those that are in the hotel room right now, somehow, some way, they're now viewing this service. They've had a bad day, bad choices. God, arrest their soul. Let them know that you are worthy of their allegiance. They've not gone too far. They've not drifted too long. But oh God, you're right there in the car with them. In the hospital room, I see you. Nick, you, Lord, you're there with a parent that's struggling. Why is my child sick? God, you deserve it. The mother, her son, her daughter is incarcerated. Send somebody to touch them, Lord. You deserve it, God. Oh, may the Lamb of God receive the full reward of His suffering. Oh, may the Lamb of God receive the full reward of His suffering. it all of us for all of you have your way and everybody in this room said yes and amen come on let's give him a hand clap of praise come on saints of God let's give him a hand clap of praise Come on, let's give him a shout of victory tonight. Oh, the king deserves it. Oh, the triumphant one. Oh, the magnificent one. Oh, the beautiful one, the matchless. Oh, the king of all kings and the Lord of all lords. And the best man.
bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Oh, the King of glory is in this room. Angels have been dispatched around the perimeter of the property. They are guarding. They are guarding the glory in this room. King, have your way. Sacred ground. It's a sacred ground right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. One more time. King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you. Oh, yes. I just want to be with you. Thank you, Lord. 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 I want you to do something for me. I want you to make your way back to your seats, if you could, please. 
There is a very specific agenda of the Holy Spirit tonight. The pump has been primed, if you know what I'm saying. And the Lord has come to do works tonight. The Lord has come to do works tonight. He's come to do business. He's come to do business. I want to ask if these two incredible people will come. Hang on to that for me for one second. I need that. Alicia, you guys come on up here. I want to share something with you all. Praise team, y'all don't go anywhere. Y'all just kind of stay, just kind of out of the... We're going to need that screen in a moment, but... I don't know who was here the night, been around a year ago, that we were sharing about peaches. I was sharing her testimony about how she was healed of a peach allergy. Had no idea she was in the building. She was from Florida. And she came to the North Georgia Revival and was healed in the water of a peach allergy that was a life-threatening peach allergy uh, when she would be around peaches that um, she would begin to her airway clog up if you will had to have one of those epi pins and one time it took nearly eight eight shots to get her from a life-threatening situation I'm sharing that story how she came to the peach state and on her way up I-75 have to wear an N95 mask and she came into this room and in the water God healed her yeah she goes the next day and she's at Kroger I guess and she's took a wrong turn and she's standing right by a basket of peaches just being around it would have caused her to have an allergic reaction. And she stood there and no hives, nothing broke out. And she decided, well, she would reach down and touched it and picked it up. And nothing in her body was reacting. And she took that peach and started to rub it all over her face. <laughs> She had that peach allergy for 61 years. And a three second encounter in the water, about an eight hour car ride up 75, up 400 through Atlanta, into a city that has 3,500 people. She entered into a building and had an encounter with Jesus in those waters right over there. That night, I'm sharing that story. She's in the building. Had no idea. And the two of you are at home watching. That night, we talked about peaches. What was going on at home? So uh, my four-year-old son, Jesse, and my daughter, Trinity, and I were watching uh, on the couch in the living room about three, four weeks ago. And I think this was even before we knew about this conference. But we had heard about the North Georgia Revival. I didn't know anything about it. And in, anyway, long story short, we pulled up the story, the hour-long video, and I think Peaches was in it, or we just, we just went crazy with wanting to see testimonies, right? Because by, by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony, right? So we heard that Peaches story, and I was sitting there, and you had had her come up, and just a whole line of people, you had had an altar call for anyone that had food allergies. So my son has a dairy allergy. It prevented me from being able to nurse him as a newborn. He's the seventh he, a child of mine, the the youngest of seven and anyway you said if you're home watching you can receive and you said go get a washcloth get it wet apply it and receive it and so everyone that got lined up had a washcloth and you said when it's time go ahead so my four-year-old was next to me I put the wet cloth on his head I put one over my heart I've been contending for healing for myself and I just said, Lord, I don't need to wait till March 22nd or 24th. You're with me now. You're with me now. And so 
the power's not in you. The power's not in that tub. He was right there with me now. And so I just said, Jesse, you will taste and see of the goodness of God with no fear and you will eat as you wish. And so I, so we did it. We, you know, said the prayer, pretty basic. And a few hours later I said, let's go get pizza. And for the first time he got to enjoy with his siblings, he had two slices. Now, normally, normally what would happen if he had just a tinge of dairy, he would get a full body rash, especially all over his trunk, his legs, he would bump up. And then, and then in the evening, he would be awake all night with pain. His stomach would ache and he would just be restless and irritable through the night. So, um, but the Lord said, go put some legs on your faith and go test, you know, go believe, you know? So he had two slices, slept through the night, no rash. The next day he had two, two um, portions of yogurt. He's been eating dairy like crazy. something happened around 11.30 Pastor Marty in your water over there in the pool that you were in we baptized over 38,000 people here in Dawsonville not counting an additional 50,000 outside of the uh, the uh, church here and other churches 11.30 midnight two three weeks ago I'm in the back talking to one of our young people and drawn to the water because of the testimony and I hear something we've not seen dozens or hundreds of miracles in these waters but literally thousands 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 and it's not about the miracles it's about meeting him well I want you to watch this this three minute video watch a miracle happen What's a miracle happen? They're my buddies in crime. Well, they're your buddies in crime. Well, what's your, what's your name? And then what's your buddies in crime's name? Pardon me? What's your name? Nancy. Nancy. And who are your friends? Yeah, we're friends. What's their names? What are their names? <laughs> I'm going to interrupt because Nancy's God. here for God to heal her hearing. Yeah, that's why we're testing out. And uh, yeah, well, you you got it because she's she's had a one cochlear implant already, and um, then then one, um, one for both ears or one? No, for one, ear? one for one ear. One for one ear. Mayo told her she needed a one for the other ear, so she can hear perfectly fine out of one ear. No, not at all. She has had one ear has been deaf for f- over forty years. 40 years. Which ear has been deaf 40 years? This one was over 40 years. The left one, 40 years. And you can't hear anything out of the left ear? 
I, I had uh, I had cochlear implant surgery last year about the same time this month, and uh, I lost this one two years ago. But uh, I qualify for cochlear again in this one, and but I had a prophetic word that within two years this hair is going to come back. But I'm planning on all of it coming back. there that is there yeah it's just that um <laughs> i can hear my own voice room you have a child at home he's not with you that has a hearing problem anybody in the house anybody in the house okay I need you to come to the front very quickly Paula Joe if you'll give me uh, as many washcloths as you can help her JC if y'all would it's Karen prophet Jeremiah is getting ready to come up here and preach in just a moment if you have a child at home that has a hearing problem Every week we send out 30, 50, sometimes over 100 of these washcloths free of charge. We don't charge anybody any for the cloth, for the shipping and the handling. We, we send them out free. But there is something that God is doing according to Acts chapter 19 of where they took the handkerchiefs from the Apostle Paul. It wasn't the handkerchief. It was that point of contact. Our faith is not in water. It's not in a washcloth. Our faith is in Him. We get reports all the time of people just like this lady. We had no idea that Alicia and her husband did that at home until this conference. It's not attached to any man. I have no miracle power at the tip of my fingers. And I thank God for the gift of healing. But I'm not called to steward that anointing. I'm called just to create an atmosphere where he wants to be at and move in water. I can't explain it. I can't, I really can't explain it. 
that my eyes have seen and my ears have heard. I can't unsee what I've seen and I can't unhear what I've heard. To my dying day, I'll do my best to host him well so that you can come and meet him in the water. You're going to receive one of these. Do we have sandwich bags for them too? You can wash it, dry it, leave a little air in it because we don't want it to mold. You hear what I'm saying? I'm just giving you some instruction here. You can wash it when you get home, but lay it on your child's ear. Put it underneath their pillowcase. Let them sleep with it. Let's pass those out right now. Church, extend your right hand. Father, I thank you that children will hear. Children will hear. They'll hear their own voice. Hearing aids will be gone. They will confound the the hearing test at school. Parents, hold it to your heart right now in that bag. Just hold it to your heart. Father, release your healing power. May the fire of the Holy Spirit that's on that water, as soon as these washcloths touch those little babies, those little bodies, some of them are grown teenagers, some of them are grown adults that still have their, they, they have their children that are grown adults, but Lord, as soon as these washcloths touch their body, they'll feel the essence of God. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen. You may be seated if you would, please. Ushers, come forward. Let's receive our offering tonight. How many of you all feel the presence of the Lord in this room? (laughs) 350 of you have registered to be baptized tonight. Don't let that freak you out. Don't let that, also don't think that it's going to happen the first five minutes as soon as things are are done. He's in the waiting. He's in the waiting. You're 80 feet from an encounter with God. It may be midnight. He's in the waiting. A few years ago, a lady came, drove all the way across the country, lost her hearing in a gun A drive-by shooting, the bullet entered entered into her ear area and just obliterated it. She drove across the country. She got into the water at 2.30 in the morning. Nobody was in the sanctuary but the baptismal team right over here. Our team served them at 2.30. The friends she brought had no peripheral vision. One couldn't hear and one couldn't see. At 2.30, I get a text. I had an early flight that morning. Karen said, where are you? I said, I'm at home. She said, ear just opened up. Her friend gets baptized next. I get a text about two, three minutes later, and it said, eyes opened up. Not the first, not in the middle, but the very end. There's something about God. There's something about the waiting. Ushers, thank you for being here. Let's give tonight. Somebody in this room could sponsor this evening. It's around $3,000 for every Sunday night. I know that's not a lot. It may be a lot for some of you, but that's really not a lot of all that we have to steward. Four swimming pools at 100 degree, security, child care, you name it, electricity. About $3,000 an evening. Somebody could underwrite that tonight. If you feel led, do that. The rest of us, $5, $10, $100, a thousand, whatever the Lord leads. You guys know that this is so low impact offering. Just obey what God speaks to your heart. Father, thank you for the time of giving and sowing this evening. I pray you bless every giver tonight. Church, everybody, please give something to help us charge nothing for those washcloths as we send them all over the world and sometimes it's 40 50 dollars freight across the world partners like you help us 
Lord, bless this word tonight. Bless prophet Jeremiah. Bless week 320. Thank you that the fire on the water is ever present. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen and amen and amen. Would you help me welcome our dear friend to this platform tonight, Prophet Jeremiah Johnson. Let him know you love him, would you please? Come on, let's give Jesus a big round of applause. Come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You can be seated. I want you to turn to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. I want to jump right into the word tonight and see what the Holy Spirit wants to do. Week 320. Can we give Jesus just a a big round of applause? 320 weeks. Looking up some scriptures. 320. Exodus 320, so I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all my miracles, which I shall do in the midst of it, and Pharaoh will let you go. Philippians 320, for our citizenship is in heaven, for which we eagerly await our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and will dine with him and he with me. And then Ephesians 3.20, many of us are familiar. Now to him who is able... You can just pretty much throw in there whatever you want. Now to him who is able to do. That's my God. That's your God. That's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's the God who was and is and is to come. That's the God that's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I'm just so grateful that the miracle working power of Jesus is alive today. I'm so grateful that there's real power available to destroy the works of the devil. Tonight I want to preach a message concerning God's ability to destroy the work of the devil in your life. I want to preach a message tonight about God's ability to bring you forth out of your last season. Some of you came through the last season, but you're still carrying the trauma of last season. I said some of you got through last season, but some of you are still carrying the trauma of the last season. And I prophesy to you tonight that every evil Egyptian spirit that's trying to follow you up out of Egypt into your next season is going to be drowned in these waters tonight. Just as God drowned the Egyptians in the Red Sea, I'm telling you, God is able tonight to do abundantly and exceedingly all that you could ever ask for or imagine concerning the work of the enemy in your life. I want to tell you, you are not damaged goods. I want to tell you that you are not a has-been. I want to tell you that you are more than just trying to get through this season. God is coming to make you new. In fact, God is coming to put you back so good together, you will be irrecognizable in your new season. Come on, I'm not preaching God the repairer. I'm talking about God the restorer. 
God who makes all things new. Behold, says the Lord on week 320, I make all things new. And even as I delivered you out of Egypt, says the Lord, and even though you found yourself in a new season, the Lord says the new season is going to drive Egyptian thinking out of you. For the Lord would say, I've come to make war on stinking thinking. I've come to make war on a paradigm that you have in your mind that says God is 50 and the devil is 50. I've come to preach to you tonight about the Jesus through his death, burial, and resurrection. He stripped principalities and powers of their power. And he has made a public spectacle of them. I rebuke every devouring spirit in your life. I command every harassing devil to bow to the name of Jesus. I want someone to help me tonight. We proclaim Jesus is king over Dawsonville. Jesus is king over the North Georgia revival. Jesus is king over America. Jesus is king over every nation. And we put the devil on notice tonight. Oh, I've come to put the devil on notice tonight. God's not brought me this far to leave me here drowning in my own sin and shame. God brought me through and he's going to bring you through in Jesus' name. Somebody give God a round of applause. Come on. Our God is able to do abundantly all that we could ask for or imagine. Oh, hallelujah. We're not agreeing with emotionalism tonight. We're not agreeing with hype tonight. We are agreeing with the Word of God and the precious blood of Jesus that speaks a better word than all shame, guilt, and condemnation. I'm telling you there's power in the blood. I'm telling you God is going to raise up preachers again who are going to preach on the death the resurrection, the ascension. They're going to preach on the blood again. We're going to sing on the blood again. We're going to worship on the blood again. We're not just going to plead the blood. We're going to preach the blood. Stop pleading the blood. Preach the blood. There's power in the blood. We are citizens of the King. We are co-heirs with Christ. We have been seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And He has given us all power, all authority. He has shared with us His dominion and His rule. And I believe on week 320, it's time that we stop cowering to the devil. It's time that we stop dealing with the spirit of witchcraft. I'm on assignment tonight, and my assignment tonight is to break the power of witchcraft off of your life. I'm coming to confront every spirit of intimidation. I'm coming to confront every spirit of domination. I'm coming to confront every spirit that tells you to shut up when God says to speak up. I'm coming to confront every demon that torments you at night. I'm coming to... I'm telling you who the sun sets free is free indeed. And I come to talk to a generation of deliverers. When the groans of the prisoners... Meet the cries of the deliverers. Revival breaks out. 
I said when the groans of the prisoners meets the cries of the deliverers, revival breaks out. And I'm telling you, there's a groan in this generation. We're groaning underneath the weight of suicide. We're groaning under the weight of perversion. We're groaning under the weight of sin. And God is seeking a generation of deliverers who have been purchased by the blood of Jesus, who have been given all power, all authority over sin and disease he's looking for a generation of deliverers who don't don't run away from the battle but they run to the battle I'm looking for some Davids tonight I'm looking for some men and women who are sick and tired of the Goliath taunting you Oh, there's power in the name of Jesus. We can just quote a nice 320 scripture or we can start living it. I believe God is able to do exceedingly abundantly all that I can ask for or imagine. I believe that for his kingdom and his power. But I'm telling you, God wants to lay the smack down on the devil tonight. It's time to serve him notice. He cannot squat in your life any longer. He has no legal right or authority because you are a blood bought. You are a Holy Ghost filled. I'm telling you, there's power in the name of Jesus. This is not about personality. Well, brother, you're so extroverted and I'm so introverted. This has nothing to do with extrovert or introvert. This has to do with there's power in the name of Jesus. Well, brother, I'm in the marketplace and you're a preacher on the stage. There's power in the name of Jesus. Well, brother, you're a male and I'm a female. There's power in the name of Jesus. Well, brother, you're white and I'm black. There's power in... Well, brother, I didn't have a good week this week. There's power in... When you stand up to the devil and you've had enough, and you are not going to allow him to terrorize your life any longer. When you refuse to bow down to his schemes and his tactics. I feel like I'm talking to some mama bears in here. Oh. When you've had enough of that devil coming up into your home. Deceiving your kids. Leading your husband into perversion. There's just something that begins to rumble deep down on the inside of you. And you begin to glory in the cross. Glory in the... We have been unable to stand up to the devil and his deception in this generation because we've been in bed with him. We cannot cast out Jezebel because we're sleeping with her. We cannot have victory over racism in our world because we're still racist in the church. We cannot get together male and female and do the work of God's kingdom because sexism is still a real thing in the church today. But no matter what the statistics are, no matter the state of the world, I'm going to preach to my last dying breath. There is power in the blood of Jesus. In Revelation chapter 12, we read the story in verse 3 of a woman in labor. She's beginning to give birth. 
I believe that there are many of you here tonight, you are in a season of birthing. God is doing a new thing in your life, a new thing in your marriage, a new thing in your family, a new thing in your ministry. God's going to do a new thing tonight in these waters at week 320. And as this woman is in labor and she's in a a new season, verse 3, another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and seven ten horns, and his heads were seven diadems. And his tail swept away a third of the stars of heaven and threw them on the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth. So that when she gave birth, he might devour her. I want to point out to you the position of the devil during the birth. I want to tell you that Satan stands on guard whenever God is about to give birth in a new season. When God is leading you into something new. When you begin to feel the birth pains or the rumble of I can't stay here any longer. Some of you are in this room because God is calling you out of the marketplace into more of a full-time faith ministry. Some of you here, you've been in full-time faith ministry and it's time to get out of it and go to the marketplace and learn how to be a Joseph. I don't want to limit the more than able to do exceedingly and abundantly. Folks, this is a dangerous meeting tonight. This is a kind of meeting where he could do so abundantly and so exceedingly that you think you're going this way and it's time to go this way. But Satan positions himself on guard in birthing seasons. Well, give me some scriptural evidence What about Moses? Moses comes forth in the earth as a deliverer, and Pharaoh issues a decree. I want to kill every firstborn so that we can prevent what God's about to do. What about Jesus? Jesus is born into the earth, and a death decree is released by Herod. I want the every firstborn male killed in the earth. What about 60 million babies? What about 60 million babies murdered in America? You know, I'm upset. I'm grieved beyond words about the murder about the shedding of the innocent blood, that I'm convinced scripturally God will not look away from. But if I could offer you a perspective, there has to be a reason why Satan is working overtime to kill 60 million babies. That little wimp, that little weakling, He must be trembling. He must be scared to death that God is going to birth a generation of deliverers in America that's going to see this country saved. Satan stands on guard. He stood on guard in the days of Moses. He stood on guard in the days of Jesus. And he's standing on guard right now in this generation. Verse 5, and she gave birth to a son, a male child, who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God in his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared by God. So that there she might be nourished for 1,260 days. Now whoever is the theologian in our midst can argue and debate with you about what that means. 
I'm asking for a little bit of grace tonight to hear what God is saying to the church that's gathered here. Verse 7, and there was a war in heaven. Can you say a war? war? Michael and his angels waging war with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels waged war. And they were not strong enough. There's some of you here tonight, you might have barely got through the last season, but you're still carrying the trauma of that season. Some of you felt like or feel like you're in some kind of wrestle where it's God 50 and the devil 50 and we're just going to have to see who wins. I want to expose every lie. I want to expose every spirit of deception in this generation that God and the devil are not 50-50. I want to preach to you from the word of God. That through the death and resurrection of Jesus, he has stripped evil powers. He has rebuked principalities and powers. Well, where is he? He's looking for you and I. Maybe it's our passivity. Maybe it's our cowardice. Maybe it's our theology that we have in the church today that knows more about devils than the supremacy of Jesus Christ. I'm just going to tell you something right now. I am troubled in my spirit. We have every kind of Jezebel, every kind of Absalom, every kind of submarine demon, every kind of demon kitty cat, every kind of demon doggy, every kind of books, every kind of blog, devil, devil, devil. Where is the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ in this generation? Where are the preachers of the blood of again where are it was the preaching of the resurrection that turned cities and regions upside down listen i don't care if it sells i'm not for sale i don't care if you oh my god i'm telling you in charismania the kookier it is the weirder it is, the more mysterious it is, we'll buy it up wholesale. But when someone just starts preaching the simple gospel, all of a sudden we're not interested. And I rebuke that spirit in this nation in Jesus' name. I'm telling you there's power in the blood. We've got every kind of dictionary. We've got every kind of index of all principalities and powers. But we know nothing of the king and his kingdom. It says Satan was not strong enough. And many of you are in a season where the devil is no longer strong enough. He has tried to choke you out. He has tried to delay your destiny. He has come forth with every kind of trick and every kind of deception. And what he doesn't know is tonight in these waters, he's going down with you, but he ain't coming up. He might have come with you in this meeting. He might be whispering lies. He might be trying to torment you. But in the name of Jesus, Satan, we rebuke you. We take authority over your schemes and we command you to get out of my mind. Get out of my house. Get out of my life. I said it this morning, in revival, the church dormant becomes the church militant. 
When God begins to pour out his spirit in a room full of people, he calls them to war. He calls them to the front lines. You can't, you can't continue to act like our issues in America are not a spiritual battle. You can't continue to act like, well, I'll just send my child to elementary school and then hope that they'll have a good Sunday school and wash them off. No, you are sending them into the pit of hell. You are sending them into a Babylonian system. And the best that you can do is put the word of God down on the inside of them. Oh, we've got to get them filled with the Holy Spirit and fire. Oh, some of us, we've got to get, I'm going to make you mad. We've got to get delivered of an American dream. Maybe you need to stop going to work and work from home. Maybe you need to stop sending them to your local school system. I, I, just, I just can't figure out why they're all depressed. Why they're all suicidal. While they're all, they're spending 90 hours a week listening to the satanic voice of the devil. And one hour a week will not do. Listen, if you can't take them out of the school system, I commission you tonight to turn your house into a house of prayer. I commission you tonight, no more television. We're turning on the worship music. We're going to throw oil around. I'm telling you, in revival, God comes for our excuses. In revival, God comes for our cowardice. In revival, we find a way. There's a spiritual war raging in the nation. There is a spiritual war raging for your marriage. And folks, this makes people uncomfortable. I'm reading something online and apparently for, you know, Resurrection Sunday, we can't say resurrection. You know, because it's all about getting, you know, people who don't know God to church. So we can't say the cross We can't say the blood because apparently we're now more interested in entertaining goats than feeding sheep. We are more interested in catering to the flesh where now many of our churches have become demon daycares. I want you to hear me. I'm not mad at anyone. I am upset at principalities and powers. I am right. I am filled with righteous indignation towards Satan and his schemes. He's not strong enough. He's an intimidator. He's a bully. He's a harasser. He loves to try to torment, but I'm prophesying to you in a new birthing season. I feel in my belly, folks, some of you, something's about to break out in your region. Some of you came here from different cities, and you've been under the power of witchcraft. You're like, oh, God, I need a breath. Folks, you need more than a breath. You need the blood. Oh, you need more than a conference. You need Christ. And I'm not saying that to discourage you. I'm pointing to you. You're coming into a season tonight where Satan is no longer strong enough to resist you. And God wants to give you a mindset. God wants to give you an understanding of who you really are in him. That you have exceedingly and abundantly more power and authority than you could ever imagine. 
that you exceedingly and abundantly have more jurisdiction. Listen, it just doesn't work in here. It works at the gas station. It works in your workplace. I'm telling you, there's power in the blood. The war breaks out. Satan's not strong enough. The great dragon was thrown down. Go to verse 8. It says he's not only strong enough, he wasn't strong enough. There's no longer a place in heaven found for him. I prophesy over your life today. There is no longer any real estate left for Satan to try to take legal ground. I'm not going to give you a foothold. In fact, as I go down in these waters tonight, I'm going to forgive all my trespassers. I'm not going to come out of these waters with unforgiveness where I give the devil a foothold. I'm going down bitter and I'm coming up glad. There's no longer a place for the devil. He's thrown down that serpent of old who is called the devil, who deceives the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now. Can you say now? Now, now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of the brethren has been thrown down, who accuses them before our God day and night. And they overcame him because of the blood of the Lamb and because of the word of their testimony. And they did not love their life even to death. I feel strongly in my spirit tonight that God wants to break many of you out of the accusation room. I started talking about this this morning, and we had to go and do what we did this afternoon. But I feel very strongly from the Lord that He's not done here. I want you to know, according to the Word of God, that Satan runs a 24-7 accusation room. He stands before the throne of God day and night accusing the saints. In Hebrews 7.25, we find out that there's another 24-7 room. It says that Jesus forever lives to make intercession for us. So what we then realize is there are two 24-7 rooms. There is an accusation room that Satan runs, and there is a 24-7 prayer room that Jesus runs, and the question tonight on week 320 is, what room do you live in? Let me talk to you about Satan for a minute, the little pest that he is. Let me expose him to you so we're not ignorant of his devices. I don't know about you, but when I think about the devil, I think about a loser. I don't have some image of my mind that Satan is this big, great, powerful being in the earth. I view him as a little termite. I believe the more I look like Jesus, the less he becomes in my life. I don't waste prayer time telling God how big my giants are. I spend my prayer time telling my giants how big my God is. 
man, if I could just help somebody. When you think of the devil, I want you to think of some little loser, pesky, termite, yo-yo, coward, thief, liar, deceiver. I don't want you to empower him any more than you have to. And I'm telling you what we behold, we become. And there's a reason... There's a reason why this generation continues to become more demonized. You know why this generation is becoming more demonized? Because we're spending more time looking at a phone than we are the throne of God. It's not just TikTok. It's not just pornography. You are fellowshipping with demons. It's not just another rated R movie. It's just not another little scene. You are empowering the devil in your life by being in fellowship with him. If you want to expose the devil, if you want to serve him notice, you've got to get your eyes locked on Jesus. You've got to draw near to him and he will draw near to to you you've got to resist the devil and that little sucker has to flee I'm telling you I'm not giving him one little mental space from here to here because I've renewed my mind when he tries to remind me of my past I remind that little sucker of his future Oh, I just pray the devil's trembling in his boots tonight. I, I pray he feels stark naked tonight. We got you, devil. You are powerless. You are defeated. Our God is a champion. He's undefeated. He's never lost a battle. Great is the Lord and worthy to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. I don't know who your God is, but my God is Jehovah Jireh. My God is Jehovah Nisi. I wish I had somebody in here who could help me. I'm telling you, God is my fortress. God is my deliverer. God is my ever-present help in time of need. My God is the captain of all of heaven's armies. Oh. All spiritual warfare is centered on the knowledge of God. Satan easily deceives this generation because we don't have the knowledge of God. We have the knowledge of Satan. We have the knowledge of Facebook and Instagram. But we don't yet have the knowledge of God. And he is calling a generation back to the ancient past. He is calling a generation to prayer and fasting. He is calling a generation of parents to stop wasting all your time on the ball field and let's start having a Bible study with your kids. These people, I, I, I just don't, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I, I don't know why the devil's winning. I don't know. I don't. Yes, you do know. We know exactly how Johnny got into rebellion. We know exactly how Susie got where they were. And I'm not here to shame anyone. In fact, if you're here tonight and the devil's lying to you, trying to make you feel like, you know what? If you messed up, I've got a good outlet for you. Repent. All you've got to do is repent. 
All you've got to do is say, I'm sorry. All you've got to do is say, I didn't do right. And Satan has to loose a hold of you. Because all of a sudden, you're covered in the blood of Jesus. You're free from every bit of shame and guilt and condemnation. I'm telling you, you're as clean as Jesus is clean. And there's nothing that you can do about the past. But oh baby, you've got a lot that you can do about the present and the future. Future. And even if I messed up with my kids, I can advise another parent to not make the same mistakes as I did. But see, Satan wants you to shut up. Satan wants you to drown in condemnation. I just don't have anything to say. Oh, you've got a lot to say. Oh, I just made a lot of mistakes. You're our best asset. God, how much time do I have? I mean, we, we've got people in the church. I mean, you dated Satan's sister. I mean, you, you got into all kinds of evil. And because you've never really gotten free by the blood. You've never been delivered by real resurrection power. You just sit there in silence. And what this generation needs is for someone who spent 20 years serving Satan, their master. And you were underneath the dominion of darkness. And you were depressed. And you were high. Although it looked like you were having fun, you were suicidal. We've got a generation that needs you to speak up and say, listen, listen to me. I was the chief of sinners. Oh, but I met the man in white. Oh, oh but I met a man named Jesus. Oh, he saved me. He delivered me. I don't have a, yes, you have a testimony. There's power in the blind. Oh, I feel Satan trembling. Sit down for a minute. Let me just finish with this, this twerp. Just, this has to be the most depressed being we've ever dealt with. This Satan, he has to be the most anxious being on the planet. I mean, wouldn't you be anxious if you knew that you had been sentenced to eternal hellfire? You talk about some people get anxious, they start biting their fingernails, they start pacing, they start sweating. I'm telling you, I believe Jesus is at complete peace at the right hand of the Father. He laughs at his enemies. This is not so, oh my God, I didn't know that was going to happen. Peace. Power. Authority. The end from the beginning. He spoke the star. I'm telling you, Satan, he's He's anxious, he's depressed, he's lowly, he's an accuser. I believe that Satan dreams of committing suicide. I believe that if he could, he would take his life. He would rather end it now than spend eternity in hell. And because of his anxiety, because of his depression, because of his paranoid schizophrenia, bipolar, whatever you want to call it, because he can't take his life now, 
he releases his orcs. He releases his demon hordes. He sends them out in the earth and says, find those who will kill themselves. Folks, I, I, I grieve by even having to say this. I believe some of Satan's best clients in the accusation room are Christians. I believe that we have very few in a prayer room in the most important hour in history. God is looking for a generation of deliverers who find their very breath and their very oxygen from the man who sits at the right hand of the Father praying over a generation. Father, give me my full inheritance in the earth. Satan is in the accusation room and whatever kind of picture, I hope it's less than what you thought he was before you came in. He's here in this accusation room and because he can't take his life right now, he's sharing his misery. And he can't just accept that he gets to accuse God day and night. He wants to find his way in the church. And he's looking to hijack your Facebook account. In fact, he already has half of your passwords. He's typing. He's criticizing. He's accusing. He's calling out. He's doing his work through the church. And he is empowered by a people who should know better. Yeah. Folks, I'm telling you, there, there is something that the pandemic in 2020, people talk about the acceleration in the last four years of what's happened. What has happened is an acceleration of Revelation 12. Woe to the earth and the sea because the devil has come down to you having great wrath knowing that he only has a short time. Satan has cranked his antics into overdrive. He is on his ever-living high horse as a coward and a loser as he is some people ask me, I'll finish in a minute. How did Satan start as a snake in Genesis and end up a dragon in the book of Revelation? Are you ready? We fed him. Oh, well, brother, Satan feels so big and so strong. Stop feeding him. Stop giving him the bitterness. Stop giving him the unforgiveness. Stop giving him the anger. Stop giving him the trauma. Oh, folks, we have an opportunity on week 320 to die well in these waters. Oh, I'm telling you, I'm prophesying to you. The Egyptian devils of your past are going to drown in these waters tonight. If you don't have time to get in the water, we'll pray in Jesus' name. But I'm telling you, the reason why there is space for the devil in your life the reason why he feels stronger than God is because we are feeding his deception by giving him real estate in our lives that belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. See, tonight I've been preaching to you the gospel. 
Tonight I've been preaching to, to you about the crucified Lord of glory. Because all of him on that cross invites all of us here on the earth. And yes, some of you might have surrendered. And I rejoice with you in your born again experience. It's time to realize that you have been born again for more than just good church attendance. For more than just a couple of bucks on an offering plate, you have been born again and purchased with his blood so that he might crown you, so that he might mantle you with all power and all authority over the devil. I'm looking in this room for some demon busters. I'm looking in this room for people that have a testimony. I once was under the dominion of darkness. I was once a drug dealer. I was once a sex addict. I was once an alcoholic. I was once blind. But baby, tonight I see. And I've been delivered from the dominion of darkness. And now I'm a child of light. I'm a child of the one true king. And devil, I'm here tonight to put you in your place. I'm here tonight to serve you notice. I'm telling you there's some chain breakers in this room. I'm telling you it's time to rout the devil. It's time to kick him out of your life. Somebody shout Jesus. Yeah. I believe I've fulfilled my assignment. Brother, that did nothing for me. You might not be born again. <laughs> the Bible is very clear in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 that there are spiritual words and spiritual meanings that do not make sense to the unregenerate. You might be here in this room and you're still under demonic torment. You're still trapped in the accusation room. He has all your passcodes and all your passwords, and I'm telling you, shut them down. I'm telling you to be careful in this season. I'm war warning you by the word of the Lord. We've got to check ourselves before we wreck ourselves. We've got to make sure that we're in the right room. Sometimes God shows us the sins of others, not as ammunition against them, but as information on how to pray for them. God shows you the sin of others, not as ammunition against them, but as information on how to pray for them. Do not take the bait of Satan. Do not bow down and agree with the spirit of offense. I feel the spirit of God really strong right now. In the same way Satan came in 2020, in the month of March, and he unleashed in a satanic assault through accusation in the body of Christ, I feel strongly in my spirit in March to prophesy to you it's coming again. And the Lord says the church in 2020 in many parts, not all parts, failed the test. But the Lord would say in my loving kindness, in my patience, I am giving you an examination once again. Will you choose allegiance to me over your allegiance to a political party? Will you choose allegiance to me more than your need to be right? For the Lord would say, great and dangerous times are upon the earth. 
For the Lord would say, even as Satan is trying to draw attention to himself. Yes, the Lord would even say, it might even feel like a circus. The Lord says, do not buy his tickets. The Lord says, watch where you spend your money this year. Watch where you choose to come into alignment. For the Lord would say, where you sow, there you shall reap. For the Lord would say tonight, I am releasing a revelation of Jehovah Shalom. And surely I'm going to kiss my people with the kiss of peace. And I will give you peace, says the Lord, through the coming storms that are going to wash up on the shores of America. The Lord says, even now, terrorists from foreign nations are planning massacres. And the Lord says, I'm going to raise up an unusual watchman anointing where I'm going to wake you up in the middle of the night. The Lord would say, some of you that have plans, you will have to cancel your plans. For the Lord would say that you will have to entune your ears into the very whisper of my heart to come into rhythm with me. The Lord would say, do not fear my people. For I am with you, says your God. And yes, Satan's time is coming to an end. But do not find yourself in this time in history in his room. Will you partner with me in prayer? Would you bow your heads with me? I don't believe God talks because he likes to hear the sound of his voice. I believe God talks because he wants to be obeyed. There are people in this room that God wants to do exceedingly and abundantly more than you can ever ask or imagine Concerning your revelation of the greatness of God and your own need to put Satan in his place in your life. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would activate the spiritual senses in this room. Holy Spirit, I'm asking that you would give us a revelation in this generation of how great you are. Great is the Lord and worthy to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. Lord, release a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of who you are. Just pray with me all over this room, just two minutes. Lord, open up my eyes. Lord, open up my eyes. Every scale, every veil, Every power of deception, I break it right now in Jesus' name. Every spirit of witchcraft, I break it off of your life right now. Come out of that fog. Come out of that funk. Every spirit of oppression, I command you to leave their mind right now in Jesus' name. I cancel every spirit of suicide. Leave them now. Every form of mental illness, we say go in Jesus' name. God, open up our eyes to your beauty. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Lord, open up my eyes that I might see you for who you really are. Now let's begin to pray, Lord, open up my eyes that I might see how much of a loser the devil really is. Lord, I pray for holy imagination. That you would catch us up in your greatness. And that you would help us to see how small the devil really is. And then, Lord, help us to see where are we? We're seated with Christ in heavenly places 
with all power, all authority. Now, Lord, we thank you for the deliverance that will take place in these waters tonight. Come on, I feel some of you just need to begin to thank him. One more minute. I feel some of you need to begin to thank him. I'm not even thanking him in faith. I'm thanking him in truth. I'm telling you tonight, something is about to pop off in these waters that has never happened before. I'm I'm prophesying some of you, you'll be healed before you ever even get in. You'll just get in the water just to thank God it already happened. Come on, thank him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for victory. Thank you, Lord, for healing. Thank you, Lord, for deliverance. Thank you, Lord. 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 Come on, just 30 seconds. Thank you, Lord. Thanksgiving rebukes the power of the enemy. Praise and worship rebukes the power of the devil. We thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. Oh, bless the Lord. Oh, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. All that is within me, bless. Oh, I'm I'm devouring fear. Oh, I'm going to drown all your fears tonight. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, thank you that anxiety is going to drown. Oh, thank you, Lord, that suicide is going to be defeated. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. I sense a glory of God in this room tonight. There's a real weighty glory here where when God comes and sits down among his people, you have to soak it up. There's people that are about to be baptized in water and we're going to begin to do that. But some of you, I want to encourage you, don't be so quick to leave here. I want you to find peace in this atmosphere of glory. And ask the Holy Spirit to help renew your mind so that when you go back to your city where you came from, you might start the prayer room. I commission you by the Lord. Some of you, you're not, I hear the Lord saying, some of you are not called to go back to your church, excuse me, to go back to your city and plan a church. Some of you are not called to plant churches. Some of you are called to start houses of prayer. And I know there's semantics and all. Listen to me. Start the house of prayer. I I commission you here. Someone who feels that, jump up real quick. I commission you to start the heart. Lord, I can't find real estate. Do you rent a home? Do you own a home? Start the house of prayer. I'm telling you, there's a commissioning tonight. As a witness against the work of the devil in your city. Start the house of prayer. I'm going to be out in the lobby. Willing to greet you. Thank you. So many of you that came to the conference. But may the Holy Spirit continue to have his way tonight. In Jesus name. Jeff go ahead. Y'all give God glory for that. If you have letter A, we want you to begin to move right now. If you've got letter A, I want you to begin to come right here. Randy's up front. Let's stay in this moment. Don't get distracted with other things. Letter A, begin to move right now. I'd like to ask the ministry team, the altar team, prayer team from CFC, would you come forward? If you've got letter A, just come right up here where Danny and Randy are, and they'll take you exactly where you need to go. I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet, please. The Christ Fellowship prayer team will be down front. Listen, friend, the Lord made sure everybody had an opportunity to hear and receive something tonight, an action item. There are divine moments where it's not enough just to hear the man of God say something. You have to respond. We have these people that are, they're trained to spend some time with you. They're not in a hurry. They're not trying to get through an assembly line. Your heart, your life, your testimony, it's very important to the Lord and it's very important to them. 
We're going to open up these altars right now. As letter A is moving that way, if you feel in your spirit you need to come this evening, let us take a little bit of time with you. If you're here today without Jesus Christ, that's the foremost thing. You've heard some of the most plain teachings of the gospel tonight. All that's missing is your surrender. I'm talking to church members. Raise your hand if you used to be a lost church member, that you were in church before you were in the kingdom, all over the room. Why don't you come tonight? If you're a church member, but you're not in the kingdom, you don't know that you know the Lord. He's calling your name. Put away embarrassment, put away fear, put away any sense of pride or dignity. Put away the lie that says you'll handle it at home by yourself tonight. No, bust the devil in the chops, walk up the aisle tonight. Say to everybody, I'm not ashamed that the Lord has shown me my need tonight. Look, if there's somebody to the left or the right of you, I know we're packed in tight tonight. They're gonna get out of your way. Just say, excuse me. If you need healing in your body tonight, Maybe you're in letter B, C, or D. Why don't you come and let us pray with you before you ever get in the water and then get in the water. Let's listen for a second. Let's listen. Let's listen. Yeah. A heaviness of accusation. Suffocating. Smothering. Listen, some of you need to come with boldness right now. You're either completely forgiven or completely unforgiven. There is no demilitarized zone. You're either in Jesus or on the outside of Jesus. And if you're in Jesus, come out of agreement with the enemy tonight and stop negotiating shame. Come out of it. If accusation is harassing you, step out of your chair, come forward. We will see to it that you have every opportunity to leave here completely free from that. Begin to move. Joni and the team will begin to sing. Come. Hey everybody, as we cut away from the sanctuary and where Pastor Jeff Lyle is encouraging people to come to the altar. I know that your own living room could be an altar. Uh, find a place where you can kneel and, and just cry out to God for uh, His hand to be upon you, His mercy, uh, forgiveness, healing, whatever the case may be. Karen, we were just in the service today, this morning and tonight, in the presence of the Lord. And even Prophet mentioned it. There's a heavy weight in the sanctuary right now. There's a level of glory um, just an anticipation, but just he's pressing into us. Yeah, I know that when we came in tonight, things kind of got started during prayer. I just felt an atmosphere of purity. Mm -hmm. That there, I mean, I, I told you, there's not a devil within 100 miles of here. It was just such an, an atmosphere of purity, and I think the Lord took advantage of that. He mm -hmm. came, he sat down. And um, I want to I encourage just what you said a moment ago, right there in your home. You heard a testimony tonight about somebody watching in their home and receiving what was happening here right there in their home, the, the yeah. couple that came up about the food allergies. I just want to encourage you. You may not be here right here in Dawsonville. You, you're not close. You're not here. You're not in the building, but you're right there in your home. Shut everything down and get glued to what's, what you're going to see on, online tonight. Mm -hmm. Get glued to that and begin to receive uh, what the Lord has for you. Lock arms with us, and whatever's happening here can happen right there in your own home. Some of you are watching in your churches. You've opened up your church, and, and you're all gathered tonight. Lock in on what God is doing tonight, and it can happen for you tonight right where you are. Absolutely. That's a word from the Lord to you. Um, at any moment, you feel the leading of the Holy Spirit to fill up your, your sink or your bathtub yeah. or to get in the shower Right. as a point of contact, as faith, as if you were here in Dawsonville, literally getting to the baptismal waters. We've heard testimony after testimony after testimony yep. of this happening. And it's not the water, Karen. It's, it's, not, it's not us. It's, it, it's the, what God's doing right now. And there is faith. We believe that we are, we're trying to steward this the best that we can to give God all the glory. But please take advantage. If the Lord prompts you, only if the Lord prompts you, obey him. Put your, put your head in, under the sink, if you will, the, the, the spigot, if you will, the faucet, 
and obey the Holy Spirit. We've just seen too much to not believe and in, too much to not encourage you. So we are excited about what God's doing here in Dawsonville. Get here as soon as you possibly can. Get to the North Georgia Revival, Dawsonville, Georgia, Christ Fellowship Church. Let me invite all of our leaders, all of our um, pastors that are watching right now. I want to invite you to the North Georgia Revival Leaders and Pastors Conference, October 6th, 7th, and 8th. 6th, 7th, and 8th of October. Okay, I know that's a few months away, but you need to plan right now. Yes. There'll be people all over the building. And I'm afraid, I'm not afraid of this, but I'm excited about it. We're probably going to have to cut off registration like we did with the Women's right, Conference. Right. And so you want to register you and your team even tonight. You can go to cfchurch.tv, cfchurch.tv, cfchurch.tv. Scroll down, then you will see the conference. There it is. It's entitled Run, Run Conference. And uh, we'll be explaining more about that later. Well, let's go to the sanctuary right now. Let's go back. Our worship team's leading us. They're praying for people at the altar. We're getting ready to have baptisms tonight, immersions. Pray for every candidate in the waters tonight. We have four immersion tanks this evening. 350 plus people have registered to baptize, to be baptized tonight. So it's going to be 12, 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. We're ready. It's going to be great. It's going to be amazing. So uh, let's go right back into the sanctuary. drive it out. There's an anointing to drive it out. There doesn't need to be a counseling session. Drive it out. Drive it out.
multiple things. The baptisms are going to be starting here in a moment. Be patient at the altar ministry. The Lord can handle the pools, all four of them, and every need that's down front. So in just a few minutes, Pastor Marty will begin to pray over the baptisms. And only those that are ministry. Listen, any, any kind of chit-chat, any casual conversation, we're going to ask you to reverence the room. And move out into the lobby. You're free to talk out there. But let's honor the sanctity of what the Lord is doing right here. There are little, literal lives at stake. So please, small talk and all of that. There's plenty of space outside. Pastor Marty, are y'all ready or no? stand in the room, would you do that at this time if you're not being ministered to, if you're in the sanctuary, I want to invite you to stand and just stretch your hands to one of the pools, there's two pools inside the sanctuary, two through those doors there, as we open up the waters tonight, on week 320, if you're just tuning in, this is week 320 of the North Georgia Revival. This is the baptismal part of the service. We just take a moment to pause. 350, 400 pre-registered for baptisms tonight. So we just pray for strength, endurance, wisdom, and understanding. Lord, may the gifts be in operation in all pools, the altar area. We just want to give honor to the Lord. We just want to bring honor to you, Lord Jesus. And so our prayer on week 320 again tonight is that you would do exactly what you've done for the past 319 weeks, that Jesus would receive all the glory and that he would do it again, that he would do it again. Whatever the need is, whatever the desire is, that your precious people would meet with you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Would you help us welcome the first candidate sent of the water this evening? Would you tell everybody your name? Marie. Marie, where are you from? Houston, Georgia. All right. Marie, what brings you in the water this evening? Well, I was baptized on Palm Sunday over 70 years ago, and I'm glad to be in the water tonight. I had a, a fall over three years ago that caused pain in my back and my legs. I need healing from that because I'm in intense pain when I sit and I also suffer with insomnia. And I'd like to stand in the water for my family my husband, my brother, my son, and my dear friends who need to be here also, but can't be, uh, Bill and Gary and Wendy. So I come and standing for them too, for healing for them. Are you in any pain right now? Yes, sir. How much pain? Zero to 10 being excruciating? Eight. You're at about an eight. In your back, legs? Lower back. Mm -hmm. And numbness in my legs and feet. And then how long has it been since you've slept all through the night? Probably over 40 years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Would you like to sleep all through the night? Yes, sir. That would be a blessing. Would you just lift your hands? King of glory, have your glory. Thank you that you endured on your back 2,000 years ago what Marie doesn't have to endure in her back any longer. Thank you that you've ordered sweet rest for her. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, you break a 40-year a forty year stronghold off of her in Jesus' mighty name.
just kind of move you back around just a little bit. No pain. Thank you, Jesus. That pain was... That pain was about an eight. Where is it right now? I don't feel it. I don't feel it. Just move it. Just, just move it around. Watch. Thank you, Lord. King of glory. One more time. This is for the rest. I just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. Tell us your names. Tabitha. Miss Tabitha. Amy. Amy. Danielle. And where are you three from? Southern Illinois. Southern Illinois. What brings you into the water this evening? We're standing in the gap for our church. It's in a spiritual battle. And for our pastor. And for our pastor. Just lift your hands. Let's just worship. Let's warfare in worship. Just a moment for your church, for your pastor, for every member, for every covenant partner there. That every attack from the pit of hell will be peeled off your church, peeled off your pastoral staff and leadership. That enemy will flee in Jesus' mighty name. We just want to be with you, Lord. So King of glory, have your glory. Back home in Southern Illinois. King of glory, have your glory. Run out every foul demon from that ministry, that church. Jesus, mighty name, silence every voice that rises up against them. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming. Tell us your names. Uh, Katie, Ava, and Eliana. Katie, Ava, Ava Eliana. Eliana. So she's about 11 and this one's about seven. Six. Six, we have a birthday coming up. We're not gonna go with you, but that's all right. Where are you three from? Uh, Kannapolis, North Carolina. Kannapolis, and what brings you in the water this evening? <laughs> I'm standing in proxy for my husband who hasn't yet received the Lord. And I believe that when I go under the water, I'm on assignment that as I go under the water, the Spirit of God is going to go to my house and He's going to touch my husband and He's going to set him free and He's going to encounter the Son of God like never before. And salvation is coming to my house today in Jesus' name. Father, that you would send angels to go find Sid wherever he is. That the angels of the Lord would be commissioned to go find Sid. As ministers of healing and deliverance and salvation, wooing him, 
drawing him. Lord, we come against the veil over his eyes. May it be removed that the enemy is placed there. May it be removed so he can see the glorious light of the gospel. Thank you for his salvation, Lord. She gets a husband, a new husband. The girls get a new daddy. And you get a new son. Come with fire in your eyes and a sword in your hand for him. you man what is your name lance lance where are you from uh, knoxville tennessee knoxville tennessee and why are you in the water this evening i uh i just want to receive some deliverance um over uh lust and sexual morality and adultery um i have multiple affairs on my uh, ex-wife and we got divorced and uh i have a 10 year old daughter and i just i'm tired of living I'm tired of living for the devil and i want those egyptian those Egyptian uh, demons that uh, Jeremiah was talking about just to come off of me. Like, I'm, I'm just tired of, you know, I'm tired of dealing with lust and perversion and sexual morality and adultery. I just want to be delivered and saved and set free and uh, just live my life for the Lord. And it is, I just want to go into the, I, you know, I'm getting out of that journey. I'm getting out of that uh, last part of my life. And I just, I'm going into this new season and I just want to go into it you know, whatever God has for me. Lance, who is Jesus Christ of Nazareth to you? He's the son of God and he's my savior and he's, he's my father and Lord. And I, uh, I bow my knee to him and pledge allegiance to him as the son of God and, um, my savior and, uh, my father. Thank you, Lord. Lance, there's two words for you. The Lord wants to release two words for you. Two words. Repent and stop. He's not interested in just washing you off tonight. He is interested in drowning your old man. That's what Jesus wants to do, is to drown Lance that you know that you knew that you would know him no more that you'd be resurrected in power and righteousness yeah yeah that that that's what he wants repent stop turn from it walk away lord thank you that you're purifying your bride there's no condemnation here there's a call for holiness I want to die tonight. I want to die. Then I want to live for you. Then I want to live for you. So Jesus. So Jesus. Send the fire. Send the fire.
bless you. Oh, wonderful. What is your names? My name is Luke Odom. This is Jude. Can you say your name? Sarah. Ezra. And Zoe. And Zoe. Where are you far from? So we're from Knoxville, Tennessee. And uh, God brought us down here today. Uh, a year ago, uh, we were separated. The enemy had uh, infiltrated. And uh, God has brought us back together. We have a ministry together as a family, so I want to go under as a, I want to go under as a family for His blood, His protection. We're boldly stepping out. We were actually here with just her and I, and we felt called to go pick up our kids in Knoxville and came back. So we're here and believing in faith that God's going to do a miracle on all of our kids and a Holy Ghost movement. That's why we're here. Woo. There's not just marriage restoration. There is family restoration. My God. My God. Anything you want to say, Mama? I'm silencing the accuser. Yes. Uh, yes. Glory. Just lift your hands, family. Just lift your hands. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. This whole family, Lord, separated a year ago, united tonight, called into the ministry as a family. Just want to be with you. Seal it tonight, Lord. Kiss this precious family. Seal them. The fire of God come for them.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Come on up, sir. Tell us your names. Ronnie and Chandra Stewart. And where are you two from? Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Yes. You were here all weekend serving at the conference, right? Wonderful. Thank God for that. What brings you up this evening? This is our 22nd anniversary, and my wife came. She wants to get baptized again. So she has um, problems with her knees, um, and she's uh, had a couple of falls, so she's been uh, hasn't been able to walk much. But she wants to get her be able to get back where she can actually walk back on her feet. So you took a couple of falls, and you're having some issues with your knees, and you're not able to walk much. What you want is a revelation of Jesus. Okay. Are you able to stand right now? away right now just melts off her life and off her body thank you right now the pain leaves thank you lord walking leaping and praising god walking and leaping and praising god yeah walking and leaping and praising god thank you for that healing lord right now in jesus mighty name all that pain go jesus mighty name we give you glory thank you lord you would you said you would heal those feeble knees thank you thank you Thank you for that. In Jesus' name. You have a tumor on your leg. What leg is it on, the right or the left? It's on the left. You have a tumor on your left leg. And how big is it? Oh, football, maybe. Half the size of a football. The size of half of a football. You know it's there? How long has it been there? Maybe a year. A year? Would you say it would be an absolute miracle if that thing just faded away to nothing? Oh, absolutely. Yes. I took a picture of it. So I can... You already took a picture of it so you can have the testimony. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Watch. Only the Lamb of God. In the name of Jesus. Only the Lamb of God. And it's been there for how long? At least over a year. Over a year. Watch what he does. Thank you, Jesus. The kingdom of heaven has come near to you. Thank you, Lord. That mass, that tumor dissolves in Jesus' mighty name. We give you all the glory. You break the back of the, the foul terrorist foreigner in her life. Loose her and let her go. Go in Jesus' name. Swelling, inflammation, tumor, mass. Go. Go. Now. Now. Now we receive. Watch what he does. Watch what he does. Amen. Watch what he does. Awesome. What is your name? Janae. Where are you from? I drove from Knoxville, Tennessee. Knoxville, Tennessee. What brings you in the water this evening? I need Jesus to cleanse everything and empower me. Cleanse everything and empower you. All right. Can you just lift your hands? King of glory, feel her life.
on that left leg, down at the bottom, disintegrate in Jesus' name, loose her, leave her body and leave her life. Where are you from, Michelle? Just moved to Dawsonville. Just moved here? Yes. Where'd you move from? Um, Noonan, Georgia. What brings you in the water? I have, I've been diagnosed with Parkinson's. And I've taken several falls the last couple of, couple of days and so many things on my body that are hurting right now. You're in pain right now? Yes. Zero to 10, 10 being excruciating. Where's the level? Five. Thank you. All over? My hips and my knees. How many times have you fallen in the past couple of weeks? About six. When were you diagnosed with Parkinson's? About five years ago. Do you know, Parkin do you know Parkinson's is no match for the Lord Jesus? Oh, I know that. And the Lord's going to heal me while I'm here on earth. Oh, yes. That's right, He oh, is. Oh, yes. yes, in His perfect timing. Yeah. No more perfect time than right now. That's right. That's right. Where's that pain? Is it still at a five? It's about a four. Uh, Were you able to move your back just a little bit? Yeah, I can move my back a little bit, yes. King of glory. Would you just stretch your hands to this pool real quick? Just stretch your hands toward her. Just want to be with you. Yeah, if you just stretch your hands to pull one for just a moment for her. King of glory. Kind of move your back around a little bit. Well, come here, come here, come here. Move it back just a little. Just watch what he does. Just move it around. Started at a five, the pain level. Where's it at now? I've had a two. Probably about a two. So went from a five to a four. Then you said it was at a three. Now it's at a two. Yes. And we don't settle for samples. We want all of it. Yes. Jesus didn't pay for most of it. He paid for all of it. Yes. And so watch the two just vanish. Watch, watch. No more falling in Jesus' name. Balance. Strength comes to the feet, the ankle bones, the knee bones, the hip, the back. 
No more symptoms, Lord. We thank you for that. You already paid for all of this. Where's that pain at? Watch when you go up. Watch when you go up the steps. No more, Lord. Thank you. Kill it away off our life. Blondie, ask for the Hey, friend, how are you? Well, it's time to be better. Then. Yes, amen. It is time to be better. Okay. Have some of the ladies down through there pray for her. What is your name? My name is Rebecca. Rebecca, where are you from? Sanford, Florida. Wow, what brings you in the water this evening? Um, I want to be fully healed from cancer. I've had um, over, well, at least 110 cancer treatment infusions. So, and the cancer progressed. I had a whole brain radiation back in July, 2020. And then I was at the Mayo Clinic this past Tuesday, March 19th, and um, they found eight new lesions in my brain. And also they said it's a matter of life or death, and I choose life. And so, <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And also, um, when I was sitting out there, my pain, because what happens is that when you're, you know, with this MVC cancer, like in my bones, in my, you know, brain, breast, you know, just all over the place. So because the more chemo you have, the more side effects I have. So when I was sitting out there, this one particular area was hurting really bad. Now it's just like a two. I mean, it still is there, but over there, it was like a six or a seven, bad. And then a month ago, I had to take um, gabapentin was, you know, the pill and stuff like that. So I just want to be healed yes. because I have two grandchildren now. So I have a two-year-old, well, going to be two. Yeah, going to be two in August 6th. And then I have a newborn grandchild that is um let's see was born November 13th there we go. yeah so I I have a lot to live for yeah and I'm very grateful I have to share this with you I am very grateful for Kay because Kay was my okay I'm let's say I've been married for 31 years Kay and Larry they were our Sunday school teacher for the newlyweds wow. and so Kay's the one that told me about this so wow. <laughs> yeah yeah and I've got like I said a lot of goofy side effects one of it's kind of embarrassing so I'm like right but I didn't do it I toot a lot <laughs> because of the GI's um, digestive stuff yeah Thank you, Lord. well it's time for all that stuff to go Amen. cancer everything has Amen. to go every Amen. side effect every symptom has to bow yes. Lord she said I choose life the God kind of life that Jesus paid a great price for you paid a great price
How are you? Good to see you. What is your name? Rita. Rita, where are you from? Mountain View, Arkansas. Arkansas? Yes. What brought you all the way from Arkansas to Dawsonville? A, a couple of things. One, I'm standing here for my husband, Scott, and my two adult sons, Lance and Luke. But most importantly, I'm here out of obedience. The Lord has dealt with me for more than two years to be baptized, and I thought it was goofy. I didn't understand it. And I wrestled with him, and I asked him, I said, why do you want me to do this? It took him a little bit, and he answered, and he said, as the water cleanses your skin, allow me to cleanse the inside. Yeah, I'm, yeah. This is my friend Cheryl. Your friend Cheryl. Yes. Cheryl, where are you from? Mountain View, Arkansas. Same place. Same place. What brings you in the water? I need healing in my body. What's going on with your body? I was in a car accident. I was hit head on in 2006 and then hit again in 2018 and in 2019. And I'm in pain every day. You're in pain every How much pain are you in right now? Zero, nothing, 10 being excruciating. Right now, I would say a four or five. Just had surgery. When did you have surgery? Well, I've had two surgeries. I had to have surgery on my left knee because of the accident. And then I had surgery last week for a kidney stone. So the Lord has something so beautiful for you and you. Something so beautiful. Mind blowing. turn it like this. You've not been able to turn your neck like that? Come on. In how long? <laughs> Since 2019. Wow. Five years? Yes, sir. I haven't been able to look over my shoulder. <laughs> That's just the beginning. That's just the beginning. That's just the beginning that Jesus would be glorified, that the Father would be lifted high and honored in your life, in your body. May these hands be extensions of healing. What you do in her, you do through her. Thank you that you're breaking a yoke. You're disintegrating a yoke off of her neck right now. Loose her and let her go.
Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore. For endless days, we will sing your praise because nobody else can do this. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, our God. Oh, praise the name. Keep turning, keep turning. Of the Lord, our God. Oh, praise his name forevermore. For endless days, we will sing your praise. Oh Lord, oh Lord our God, who oh, praise the name. Where's the back pain? I don't have back pain right now. <laughs> I don't have back pain right now. <laughs> My back's not hurting. Right now. And then how's the neck? Woo! My neck is good. Full range of motion. How's the neck? Rita! Rita, come here, Rita. Come here, Rita. Look, Rita, come here. Look, Rita. Look, Rita. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise his name forevermore. For endless days we will sing your praise. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord our God. Come here, Rita. Come here, Rita. Come here, Rita. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise his name forevermore. For endless days, we will sing your praise. able to pick that knee back up why does that surprise you because I haven't been able to do it in, since 2019 you've not been able to do that since two no I've had my range of motion I have not been able to pull my leg back like that Jesus is the only one that does this water's beautiful worship and the word is amazing but Jesus is the only one who heals yeah. Now you just go and do what Matthew 10 says. Matthew 10 says, as you go, preach. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you've received, now freely give. Yeah. We celebrate with you. It's wonderful. It's Hello, sir. What is your name? Douglas Holty. Where are you from? I'm from Oklahoma. Oklahoma? What brings you to Dawsonville? Came for the conference. Okay. 
Yep. Came for Friday and Saturday and stayed over Sunday. What brings you in the water tonight? Well, part of my testimony is my wife went to the doctor a few months ago and her, one of her eyes, she had a hole in her macula. And we've been praying for a healing. We talked with one of the people from Ultra Global. They prayed with us over the phone. I prayed with some of their people. Wednesday, we prayed with them. Thursday, we got the report, healing. 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 No surgery. Healing. Me, when Jeremiah asked to stand for the house of prayer, I stood. I want the house of prayer in Coweta, Oklahoma. Okay. The next thing is, I've lost my sight in my left eye from 2010. Longer than that. I can't see out of it at all. Like you can't see really good or you can't see ze- you can see zero i can barely see any light that's it the, the eye they did stuff to it that caused a problem with it i also had a retinal detachment in my right eye as well they did surgery on that and i have decreased visual field do you know none of this is an issue for the lord jesus Amen. i'm looking for a creative miracle and i'm thanking god for a new day when i go back to Kuwaita. So it would, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it would have to be an absolute miracle for that left eye to see, not just light, but to see again. That's right. There's nothing that medically they can do. There's nothing they can do. Nope. Only they're good physicians. I'm sure they're good physicians that you've been going to. The Bible says he's the great, Jesus is the great physician. From what I've read, it says Jesus healed them all. Blind from birth, we're able to see. Why should you be any different? How long has it been? One more time. How long has it been since you've seen out of this left eye? Well, actually, it was probably 2006. Uh, the, the right eye is when I had it got attacked in 2010. So, yeah. All right. Watch.
against you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. The kingdom of heaven. Let me see your right hand. Let me see your right hand. The kingdom of heaven has come near to you. What is your name, sir? Uh, uh, Papa Bob Merrill. Papa Bob. Where are yeah. you from? Columbia, South Carolina. Wow. The home of the Brock family team. Brock and Angie Neal in the wonderful yeah. church yeah. there. Beautiful, You've beautiful. We've been there before. Yes, sir. What brings you in the water? Uh, the not working very good, not remembering things is one. I know that's old fashioned, but it doesn't mean I still have to have it. I'm going to get it fixed. Uh, got like arthritis or rheumatoid in my legs and they get puffing up and all that and bladder ain't working so hot either that's it okay. three out of three is it is it short-term memory loss long-term or just no, just short short term. i can short-term. tell you what happened 50 60 years ago or 25 years ago two days ago can't tell you a thing isn't that something you can remember 55 60 years yes. ago but yes. not two days ago no not yet not yeah, excellent. I like your eyes. That's good. <laughs> you snuck that one in on me, didn't you? <laughs> That's good. That's Papa good. Bob, time to get your memory back. When Jesus was, he was with a man in Mark chapter 5. By the time he left that man, the Bible says he was seated, fully clothed, and in his right mind. You say, okay, well, let's get a new mind.
Yeah. When did when did you come down to Georgia from from up in Columbia, South Carolina? When did you come down? Came for the conference. Oh, you came for the con. When was the conference? Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and oh. today. Whose conference was that? What conference? Oh. I, what conference was that? Uh, Jeremy John. Jeremiah Johnson. Jeremiah Johnson. Yes. Uh, did you did you bring somebody with you down here? Uh, the lady up there. Yes. You brought somebody. What's her name? Uh, yeah, good. If I'll think about it. <laughs> well, think about it. Um, Brenda. Brenda. Is there a Brenda back there? Come here, Brenda. Come here, Brenda. <laughs> so you came for the conference this past weekend with Jeremiah Johnson. Yes. And Had a good time. Absolutely. Learned a lot. I'm not sure I'm beautiful, but thanks anyway. <laughs> Doing great. And you know Miss Brenda? Oh, yes. Right? Don't we? Not a lot, but good. <laughs> not boyfriend, girlfriend, none of that fancy stuff. Yeah, none of that stuff. That's why she's in one motel room and I'm in the other and I lock the door. And That's beautiful. <laughs> Papa Bob, come here. Come here, Papa Bob. This is just too much for us. This is awesome. No, this is wonderful. All right. Too much in a good way. We enjoy this. But the mind of Christ. Thank you. From the crown of his head to the soles of his feet to the fingertips, Lord. That's so wonderful. We give you glory, Lord. I just want to go one more time. Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for Bob. Thank you. I love doing this. Just stand on the side, do whatever you want to do, Papa Bob. You can do whatever you want to do. You do whatever you want to do, Papa Bob. It took a lot of work to get what you got. It didn't happen overnight. What is your name? Brenda. So he was right. He was right. All right, Papa Bob. Where are you from? Well, I've lived in South Carolina for almost eight years, but I came from Montana. Thank you. No. <laughs> My Montana. I don't know these people. On the on the ride down, did you did you see Papa Bob struggle a little bit with trying to remember things? Did you see anything? Actually, he's lost his wallet, and we don't know where it is. He's lost his wallet. This is how beautiful the Lord Jesus is, Father. We just thank you that you sent angels right now to find his wallet, return his wallet to him. Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing stolen, everything intact. We thank you for that, Lord. It's just a glimpse of your goodness for Papa Bob and Brenda, that you're with them, that you've been with them, that you love him. Thank you, Lord, for returning that. Expedite that to him. What brings you in the water, Miss Brenda? Well, there's uh, something that I, uh, when I was here last time in January, I mean, I was amazed because the Lord healed me with, from arthritis, and I actually have an MRI to prove that I have no arthropathy, so that's amazing. <laughs> you had it before, and then you came here, and you don't have it. I don't have it now, but um, I had an MRI of my lumbar spine, and I have an L4, L5 subluxation that is so severe that um, if I don't get an injection for pain, then... It's surgery, so I'm here because of that. I don't want surgery. I mean, I want God to get every drop of glory that he has come into him. Yeah. I do. Are you in any pain? Yeah. How much pain? About a five. Right now it's about a five. Mm -hmm. Where, just in your, in your lower back? Yes. Still there? Lower. Go down lower. Lower, 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 lower. Yes, right in there. Still at about a five? Maybe a four now. What are they doing? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. They're doing uh, Matthew 10, 7. It says we would lay hands on the sick and they would recover. It said heal the sick. Still at a four? I think it's a three now. It's already at a three. Okay. Can you just lift your hands?
Watch, Miss Brenda. Only Jesus can do this. He's the only one who can do this. Nobody else can do this but Jesus. That's it. Nobody. All the glory. All the glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Come on. Do you remember where was Mike Signorelli from? Do you remember what state? Did he say what state he was from? Do you remember what state Mike Signorelli? He was. He's not from Georgia. He's from New York. Where? New York. Mike Signorelli was from. Yeah. Yes. Smart Alec in every crowd. Normally it's me, but it ain't tonight. It's him. It's from New York. Yes. It's from New York. Well, why do you think Trump acts like he does? Same night. Yeah. From New York. What do you expect? How old are you now, Papa Bob? 83, sir. You're 83 years young? Uh, Let me see that hand right there. Thank you, sir. Still got a strong grip. You're 83? Why would I lie? You look wonderful. Well, I use that as a witness. I ask people how old I am, and they guess, and they say, oh, you don't look 83. So I tell them there's three reasons why. One is Jesus. Number two is chiropractic, not pills, and do what you're supposed to do. And it works like a charm. Works like a charm. Open it up open it up. Wonderful. Right? Wonderful. Uh, I'll send you a bill. Huh? Yeah, send me a bill. <laughs> you ain't gonna pay it. <laughs> I think she has to on her back I think she's still wiped out. She's still wiped out. Well when she comes to, ask her what level her back pain is. <laughs> we'll get somebody else. <laughs> your name my name's Les Les from right here part of the team what brings you in the water uh, I would like my hearing restored and um, I'd like my back healed complete 100% you're back in it's in pain right now uh, no I got a lot of painkillers down so it don't hurt right now but I have to take a lot of painkillers to be able to just be mobile during the day at work and things like that it's lower lower back it's, and how long has your lower back been hurting you oh, about 20 years consistently getting worse yep the chiropractor says you're very close to bone on bone how bad are the ears um if i couldn't if you turned around i probably couldn't understand what you're saying i gotta read your lips it's um it's severe so you saw the testimony of the lady two weeks ago oh yeah oh yeah i was here she hadn't heard in like 40 years yeah yeah yep yeah. so what he does for one he'll do for the other I know he will, no doubt about it.
still over there? Oh, she's got, she's got laughter hit her. Oh, it's okay. That's all right. Yes, sir, Papa Bob. Okay. All right. Ask her where that pain level is. Come on in, friends. Good to see you again. You were you were in here not too long ago. When was the last time you were in the pool? September. You're in here in September. Now, what was your name? Sharon. Miss Sharon, where are you from? Bottlesville, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. What, why did you come to Dawsonville this weekend? I love the Lord. I'm a God chaser. Yes, you are. <laughs> You're a God chaser. Were you here for the conference? Yes. Uh, Alto Global has invited me, and that's what I came. But the first time I came here, I didn't get to baptize because I was called to Los Angeles. Um, so I didn't get to stay on Sunday at all. Wow. But uh, second time I get to last September, and this is a second time. I mean, I could be in the water with you. Uh, it's an honor, Miss Sharon. Why are you in the water? Um, I needed a new retina, the creative miracle on the, my retina. It's like a film behind your eyeball. And um, 
the Lord, I trust that He is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all what we could ask or think. I've got lots of friends that who helps me around, but um, sometimes I do boo boo and be, don't listen to uh, when. So that's why I want you all to pray for me so I could listen well. I will listen well and and uh, I will have a creative miracle but whatever it is I will serve the Lord I love him so much and thank you all for praying for me wherever I went <laughs> Auto Global always pray for me and your pastor Todd and, and Karen um, words cannot describe my gratitude and thank you, Pastor Marty. You always say hi to me, even though I cannot see. You always let me know where you were at. <laughs> and I told our driver last night, uh, follow Pastor um, Marty, and he will get us out of the parking lot. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Thank you. That's wonderful. He has a gift for you. The Father has a gift for you. Thank you, Jesus. That His Son paid for. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit comes to deliver. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Isaiah prophesied years and years and years and years, hundreds of years. Before you came, he said, when the Messiah comes, he would open up the blind eyes, unstop the deaf ears. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. How long has it been since you've seen out of your eyes? Well, I had to quit driving 30 years ago. 30 years you had to quit driving. It was very difficult. Um, would it be a miracle for you, to be able, for you to be able to see? Can you see anybody out there? No, <laughs> I cannot even see Not yet? You. <laughs> you can't even see me? Yeah. But it Not would yet. be wonderful if I could drive again. <laughs> I would pick up all the grandmas and take them to the Christ Fellowship Church. <laughs> so when, when you can drive again, when Jesus opens your eyes and when you can drive again, you will bring grandmas to the church? Yes. Oh, happy day. <laughs> well, I needed my friend, Cynthia. She goes to Jonathan Kahn's church, but she is here with us. Can you believe it? What an honor. And, and she sings that song really good. Well, you do too. And you have to wait until next year. She will be back here to get baptized. <laughs> Lord, give her an oh happy day today. Give her.
watch your friend get baptized? Sure. Notice I said, watch your friend get baptized. Can you stand right over here? Just bring her right over here in the corner. Don't bring her right over here. You'll have to lean her right over here to the corner. You can stretch your hand out in about two feet. You'll be touching the ledge about two feet. Yeah. And turn right there. There you go. Yeah. Oh, it's cold. Yeah, you just go like that. Come here. Come here. What is your name? Elizabeth. And who is she to you? She's a friend and it's an honor when she comes to the conferences to serve her i love serving her she's a treasure she's a treasure she's beautiful so you've known and seen her that she's been having to be led around you've seen that before right yes i've met her in uh, march for eternity 2021 and then when her eyes come back and she's walking on her own won't that be amazing that'd be awesome <laughs> So what brings you in the water other than being with her, your friend? Uh, being baptized fresh unto him, fresh consecration. Take me deep, 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 deep. Anything and everything I want, anything and everything he has for me and anything and everything he wants to do within me, to be out, anything that needs to be out, to be out. Yes, just do it deep. <laughs> do it deep. Watching. You're watching. So, are you saying like? Laughter doeth good like medicine. Like medicine. <laughs> the joy of the Lord is her strength. 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 My God in heaven. We love you, friend. You'll see us next time. My faith, Lord. My faith, Lord. Eyes to see and ears to hear. Those eyes be open. your names uh jamie james preston jamie and preston where are you two from hotter springs he's from douglas springs. i'm from lithia springs lithia springs what brings you two in the water tonight uh, i got in to support my friend um he's got some stomach issues and stuff like that and then uh, i feel like i got set up by the lord in a way though 
because uh, when I was out there, there in service, I was thinking about getting in, and I felt like he said, uh, he said to get in and ask for uh, restoration and healing in my marriage, you know, and, uh, and he said, uh, he said, declare, I had to declare what our agreement is, you know, and uh, in prayer with the Lord this, this week, or last week, sometime recently, he said, um, because you, because we're friends, he said, uh, you ask for special grace and special mercy, and you will receive it, but you got to declare it. So that, so he said tonight, I had to declare it. So that's what I'm going uh, yes, sir. How about you? I've had problems since I was 17 with my stomach, and I just found out I have uh, IBS. I also found out that um, I have, I'm allergic to gluten and wheat, and it's really affecting my workability and my day-to-day functions with my stomach problems. Did you hear the testimony of the precious couple that their son got healed of that? Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, I heard about that. Yes. You know what Jesus does for one, he does for another. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You receive that? That what he did for that young boy that he'll do for you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's let him do that. And so... Brenda's still over there. Come here, Brenda. <laughs> Brenda, it's 3.30 in the morning. You've been there that long? I'm teasing. Come here. What's he been doing over there? What's the Lord doing in your body? No pain. <laughs> She said, I'm jumping, I'm jumping. What? Have you not been able to jump? No. <laughs> no. No. Oh, my God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God. I can't believe this. I, yes, I do. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. It's real. You're Jesus. I believe it. Oh, my God. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you, Father. He's got such a heart to minister, Lord. He's always praying for people, always interceding for people. Lord, always putting people before himself. But tonight, Lord Jesus, you want to do something very beautiful in his life, in his body, in his marriage. Thank you, Father. Come in power. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done right here on earth as in heaven. In Jesus' name. Sir, good to see you, youngster. Getting started. Welcome back. We've seen you both, haven't we? Yes, sir. When were you here last? It's probably been a year ago, I guess. A year ago, I remember. Tell everybody your name. Raymond Wyndham. Raymond, where are you from? Originally from Chattanooga, but I live in Delano. Yeah. Yeah. What brings you in the water tonight? I had a minor stroke. Wednesday night, he had a stroke? Yes, yes. He spent a couple days in the hospital, brain bleed in the cerebellum area. And uh, it's, it's it, you know, he, they sent him home. He's been recovering slightly. Speech is slurred. Before, up until that time, he's dealt with progressive uh, dementia that's gotten worse and worse. And he's got about 40% hearing loss. Victory in the Lord. You have victory in the Lord. Amen. And he, he gave me strength to do what I need to do. How young are you now? 86. Just getting started. <laughs> That's your, come here. You need to declare that. Say that. What'd you just, this is your husband of how many years? 65 years. And I'm not ready for him to go to heaven yet. I mean, I know he's going to go there, but I want him to stay here with me. You understand? Okay, let's pray that way. <laughs> woman said to Jesus, but the crumbs, I might be a dog, Lord, but I'm your dog. Yeah. I want the crumbs. I'm going to get the crumbs from your table. That's what I want. He said, well, well my husband pray. for a long time, I'm not ready for him to go yet. So we're going to pray length of days and long life and memory return. Every foul symptom from that stroke, bow, the hearing. Don't make me suffer any longer. Full restoration. Yeah. Been married 65 years together. Seven children. 16 grands. Eight great grands. I asked for it. <laughs> Where y'all going on your 70th?
Who's Roderick? Oh, him. Okay. All right. Wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. And how long have y'all been married? 65 years. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Okay, fine. By the way, he's a preacher too. He's a preacher too. I can tell. He loves God with all of his heart. Look, my wife's a preacher all the time. <laughs> all, all the time. We'll take that. You want to stand right over here and let's 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 get him. Let's get him. Good memory too. Got a good memory. And his name was what? Roderick. 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 And you're in you're in the ministry? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Where do you pastor? Movement Church in Madison, Alabama. Woo. Movement Church. How long have you been pastoring there? Ten years. Wonderful. 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 Lord, just pray for a new season for his church and his ministry deeper level of revelation and intimacy with you. Lord, miracles and signs and wonders, Lord. We're just, we're just pursuing you. We're not pursuing the gifts and the miracles. We're pursuing you, Lord. Lord, send him laborers from the north, south, east, and west to come help, co-labor in the ministry with him. To have a heart for you and a heart for others. Well, other than you've been in here with your dad here, what brings you in the water? Um, stiffness, real, real stiffness of pain in my left knee. 
and uh, right knee sometimes too, but, but um, I've had it for two or three years. A lot of left knees tonight. There was a lady that was able to pick her knee all the way up. She said, I've not been able to do that. How many years was it? Well, we had a shift change. Yeah, I don't know if y'all were in here. You remember? Yeah. Years and years yeah. since she was able to do that. Blew her mind. Thank you, Jesus. How much pain are you in right now? Zero to ten being excruciating. One, really. One. It's, 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 only, it's only when I bend it. Like, well, let's bend it just to see. Yeah. When I, that's, that's as far as I can bend it. And, uh, and it, it's hurting right there. It's hurting right there. Yeah. That, yeah. Is that a one or a five? or I where's can't it? go past that. That's probably a seven. Yeah, right now. So that's why I keep it. He is the strongest in the family. All right. So watch this. You want to keep your glasses on? Yeah.
Well, wonderful. We, yeah, we remember you guys, but tell everybody your names. Um, Karen Tressler. Karen. Sharon Tressler. And where are you two from? Coco. Indiana. Yeah. From Indiana. Yeah, we do. You drove from Indiana. Was that 12, 13 hours? Uh, nine, nine and a half. Nine. She didn't, actually, she didn't drive in. I'm the narrator, the navigator. <laughs> okay. Well, wonderful. What brought you down here to Dawsonville? Uh, basically, we come back for a celebration. Um, we just, we're just going after God, and we have our whole lives. Um, and there was, since last year, there's been healings. And uh, I walked in last year with a cane um, and uh, then got involved with the revival in Martinsville, Indiana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because we're an hour and a half away from there. Life of Love Ministry. Yeah, yeah we they found out. About them. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, so then we ended up taking different family members and different ones like that. Um, but we wanted to come down just for celebration. And then we was um, out here talking to one of the gentlemen, and he was ministering to us. And, and he says, you know what? You're, you're reaching out to other people. What are your needs? You know? So um, that's just kind of where I want to, for myself and for Sharon also. Um, I have a cold. I don't know a lot of people. My, I didn't hear about it. Didn't know anything about it, but it's called a collation in your feet. So um, it's like a, a growth. There's supposed to be a, like a, your bones aren't supposed to meet in your feet and your ankles. And, I, and there's supposed to be a space there. So my ankles, and they didn't find it from childhood or anything. So, and then it just, so it got missed. Long story short, they said if I've had problems for years for my feet and uh, 27 years of back issues and uh, MRIs, therapy, all that kind of stuff. I'm sick of it. <laughs> um, and it might have just been just for my feet problem, and I didn't realize that. Yeah, until just like, what, six months ago. So the doctor said the only way it could be corrected is surgery. And I said, no, because I'm not going there. Um, and um, and uh, so that's kind of where it's at. I said, I'm just tired of the arthritis, for, you know, from the neck on down and shoulders. And it's just like, you know. Whatever it is, so in, so in, so that's what I'm saying. You be involved in. Sometimes you can be involved in ministry and church, and you can reach out to other people. But if you're not taking care of yourself, you miss the, the extra blessings. I want the extra blessings, and and that Sharon does too with her issues. What are your issues? Are you in pain right now? By the way. Well, yeah, but um, you know it's better. How much pain are you in? Zero, nothing, ten being excruciating. Uh, probably about five. Right now. Yeah. She's yeah. pain tolerant a lot. Yeah. She really is. Just in your back or your feet too? Back and, and feet. I had to, I got the um, the tingling from the um, neuropathy and then the sciatic nerve in my left leg going on right now. It's going on right now. Yeah. God's good. He is good. How about you? Um, I just bone issues. I mean I'm I'm doing a lot better. Um, and God is healing me processly in a process, and but I've had problems with my my um, right lower back, my lower back and my right side, my right side, my lower back and my right leg, and just today, and just standing up, and this, I'm tired of being doing the sniff, being stiff when you get up and get down from arthritis. 61, I'm tired of it, you know, tired of it, I'm tired. Are you in pain right now? I just aching. It's more not pain, pain, but it's aching. It's like that. Yeah, I want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> where does the pain? Where does the pain level go when you do that? Oh, probably it was about about five or six. So it's just, and it's not all the time, you know. It's, it's yeah. I want to get. Sometimes I get up and down. No, it, it's it's better. I know it's going to get better. It's going to be gone. It's gone. When you do it now, where's the pain? Where's the level? Oh. Whew. I don't want to fall because <laughs> I, I can't swim. <laughs> mm. Still at about a five? No, 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 no. Woo! No, it doesn't hurt in the corner here, right? And it's not hurting. It's not hurting right there?
So we prayed for your wallet. You lost your wallet and it's back. They brought your hat and your wallet to you. It's wonderful. How long was it lost? Uh, all day. All day. Three or four hours. Okay. Would love to. I would love to. I would love to. So now where, where's the pain in your body? Is it, is it still there? The, the tingling's gone. Tingling's gone, pain, but what about the pain? I would have to say my feet, I'm, I usually can't walk with, without any, um, anything on my feet. So, I, you know, it's not hurting. So, you know, it's, the, the test is gonna be when I go out and take off the slippers I have on. Yeah. And can walk barefooted. I haven't walked barefooted for years. Years. How many? Two? Three? Ten? Ten years you've not walked barefooted. No. I mean, I mean, I, I had to, like when I get in the shower or I had to put a slippers on because I can't stand on it. Because well, that's frustrating. Yeah, that's part of the neuropathy and all that kind of stuff together. And then it's frustrating. Muscle spasms and stuff since 27 years. Well, that's got to go. Yeah. Barefooted. <laughs> Say that one more time. The pain that I had in my back is gone because I couldn't even stand to the dishes. <laughs> and it's gone as I'm going again, going down and felt go. <laughs> just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. So she'll dance in your presence until you come again. Barefooted. <laughs> Jason. Menden. Where are you two from? Colorado. What part of Colorado? 
Littleton. Denver. Denver, yeah. Denver, Littleton area. What brought you to Dawsonville? Uh, conference. conference. So you came for the, the yeah. Alter Global Conference and you stayed over through Sunday. What brings you in the water? Well, um, just a number of physical ailments that I have. So healing, oh, um, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, um, just, just, yeah, just stuff. <laughs> but, you know, that, and I just... Did you say dry eyes? Dry eyes. Dry eyes. What, explain that to people that may not understand. I don't, just, it's, um, it's called Sjogren's, so just really dry, dryness of skin, dryness of your eyes, they're always drying out. So, yeah. But you're able to produce tears? Yeah. Okay. You just, does it get itchy a lot? A little bit, yeah. Well, that has to go. It has to go. How about you? Oh, sorry. No, you're good. No, uh, uh, <laughs> um, not yet. Um, but it's coming. It's, it's coming. A number of reasons. First, first and foremost, I want to uh, stop stop the cycle of sin and addictions in my family line, and I want to break that. I want to stop it with me and Menden over her line. Uh, we say that that has to go. It's going to die in this water, never to return. Uh, the devil's done messed up because what my family started, we're going to finish. At least they've they've prayed and they've launched us to this point. Uh, I've also am going to leave uh, seasonal allergies, hay fever in this water. I'm going to um, get to the, whatever the root of my back issues are that's caused me not to be able to stand strong. They're going to go. Um, and I'm going to stand in the gap for my sister who was diagnosed with cervical cancer. What's her name? Laurie. When was she diagnosed? September, maybe last year. So somewhere around there. Gone. And, and whatever else the Lord wants to do, I just want to do what, say what I'm thinking right now. But whatever else you got, Lord, we're we're open and more than we can even imagine. So. Yes. Well, I yeah, I'm a first generational Christian, so. Um, So I just want to be the biggest and brightest light to my children and to my family. And just, um, I want them to see freedom. So. The same thing that's going to happen. That happened to my mom and dad.
Well, you're about to be better than okay. What's your name? Phyllis. Phyllis, are you in pain right now? I am. <laughs> How much pain are you in? Zero, nothing. Ten being excruciating. I'm probably a, oh, about a seven. seven. And I'm an in, intercessor, and so okay. the Spirit's drawing me. <laughs> Where are you from? Knoxville, Tennessee. Knoxville, Tennessee. And you're at about a seven right now, pain level. Yes. What brings you in the water? You know what? I feel greedy. There's so much. <laughs> so much. Matthew 7, 7. Jesus said, ask. <clears throat> okay. Um, I do want healing for my back. Um, I have rods. Screw. I've got some screws in there that are about that long. Is it still out of seven right now? Yeah. Just your back? It's this side, this hip. surgery a year ago. I've had four surgeries and each one of them have helped but this last one has been so hard to recover from. Can't get my strength back but I'm going to. Those glasses for yes. Watch what he does. Still in the seven? was it?
What is your name? Sasha. Sasha. And that's your precious mother. Where are you from? I grew up in Romania, but we're from Knoxville, Tennessee. Wonderful. Why are you in the water tonight? Satan has... I don't care what people say. Satan comes after preacher's kids and missionary kids harder than anybody else. And he has tried to kill me physically. He has tried to kill me mentally. And God Almighty is going to set me free. He's already set me free from witchcraft, homosexuality. And he's going to deliver me from all this other stuff that I know is there. Yeah. He's going to heal the PTSD yeah. in the name of Jesus. He's going to heal the anxiety. He's going to heal yeah. my family's heart before we can go forth. Because I have a burden for the missionary kids. And I have a burden for the pastor's kids. And God, we're going after LGBTQ. We're going after it in the name of Jesus. He's got, he had me to the point where I couldn't even pray out loud. But I can breathe tonight. And I say that I'm delivered. And I say, even though I've been baptized before, I know the cost and I will pay it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Thank you. 
your friend what are your names what's your name my name is Francis Francis and you're just new friends you just met yes. Through yes. A mutual friend. Yes. you met through a mutual friend well what was your name I'm Jenny and where are you two from I'm from Greensboro North Carolina I'm from Kannapolis North Carolina There's wow that's your friend wonderful hey friend what brings you in the water this evening uh, I had a knee replacement but it the knees begin to give me problems and my other knees giving me a lot of pain and I also have a hip pain. I also have, yeah, and I also have a hole in my esophagus and had it for years and they said I'm too old. That's what they said. They said I was too old to get surgery. That's what they said. That's what they said, but I said my Jesus can take care of it. With no, with no, with no... No knives, no scissors, no scalpels, no none of that. No blood loss. Not have to put you under, but he does have to put you under. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm ready. Are you in pain right now? Yes. Uh, both of my knees, because I've been on them all weekend here, yeah, yeah, yeah. and my hip, and last night I couldn't get any sleep. It's hurting right now, like level of zero like to ten. Five. It's about a five. Yeah. Right it's about a five. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's when I walk, it's when I hurt. In, in both of your knees, it's about a five in the back. Yeah. Yes. Watch. This is what he does. He's the only one that can do this. Still out of five? No. No. I'm bending up. Nope, that's He's been doing this all night long. He's been doing this all night long. Yes. All, literally, he's been doing all night long. He's been doing this. Ooh, Jesus. So it's not a, Ooh. not at a five anymore. Ooh, no, no, I just, Where's it at on a level of one to ten? About a one. About a one. Yeah. Wow. Are you able to do something? <laughs> uh, what am I looking at? Tell us what. Am, what is this? You couldn't do this before. I could come up a little bit, and not go a whole lot, but the pain would be some. I, I'm getting out of the water. <laughs> Yeah, I do it. I do it. <laughs> so it's not at a five anymore. Where's the Where's the pain? It's absolutely gone. I'm not kidding you either. You don't have to. Kill I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that about my Jesus. <laughs> yeah. So what does it cause you? Your esophagus is it like you can't it's eat certain things? Rips, uh, Blood. You get choked a lot or something? No, I have to go every six months and get two pints of blood. When do you go back again? Uh, I go back next month, but I don't have to go back. How long have you been going? Uh, about, mm, about, two. I've been going about 20 years. 20 years? Yeah. And you're supposed to go back when? I'm supposed to go back in three months. In about three months. Well, I'm not telling you to do one thing or the other. I would just say, man, it'd be awesome for them to go in and confirm. I'm going to get it confirmed. And then not have to do anything. And they'll say, what happened? And you'll have the opportunity to talk about this moment when King Jesus stepped in and gave you something. The pain in your body was just a glimpse of what he's doing on the inside. Wow, thank you. And also, I want what you said that 
the uh, gold hair ones that's going to get energy. I want the energy that they spoke about. They spoke about energy. Yeah, he said all the silver hair ladies, or well, silver hair people was going to get what? some energy, and I want to get the energy I'll also. Take that too. That's better than any drink, any shot, any pill, any chemical you could ever inject. Doesn't leave you hungover, strung out. Uh, isn't that wonderful? Ooh, it's good. It's good. Okay. Are we? I'm done. Okay. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, my friend, how about you? Okay. No pain. No pain? That little pain has to go. Jesus didn't pay for most of it. No, he got it all. All of it. Amen. So, um, I have some arthritis things going on, which my career is such a harvest. I work in a hair salon. And so that, that is a lie from Satan. He's trying to deter that with this arthritis. Um, I want to say more importantly, um, my husband and I have five daughters between us. And the older two live in Asheville and severely engulfed in witchcraft, like full-blown blatant witchcraft. And then the next one is confused about her sexuality. And then the next one, she's sweet and just too pretty for herself, I think. But my youngest daughter, Mathia, was here with me last year and we got baptized and she loves the Lord. She's really a blessing. Um, her name's Mathia, which means a gift from God. And she has really bad eyesight. And so when she came last year, she wanted to get healed, her eyes healed, and she didn't. And so she was very disappointed. And I can explain to her the best I can how it works, but I'm gonna stand in the gap today for all five girls and then my husband just for his um, a renewing of his mind. Yeah. His, name? his name's John. John. Your daughter didn't do anything with horses, did she?
Hey, friend, how are you? Good to see you. You ready? We've been waiting. What's your name? Mindy. Mindy? Where are you from, Mindy? I'm Joplin, Missouri. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, what brings you in the water? I need healing. My back. A lot of backs, a lot of knees, sciatic. What, where's the pain at right now? Lower back? Mm-hmm. On a scale of zero to ten, how how zero is nothing, ten being very, very painful. It's like a seven. Set a seven right now. Just your back or anywhere else? My neck and my um, knees and my ankles. I don't know if you could hear or see a while ago, but a woman was not able to turn her head either way. And then next thing you know, she's like, she says the first time she's looked over her shoulder in years. That's what he wants to do for you. Are you still in pain? Are you still at about a seven? Right now? Okay. Anything else?
much for leading. Pain in your back? You still feel it? It's okay. It's okay. You still feel it? Still at a seven or a five or three? Where's it at? What's your name? Wes Munyon. Wes, what was your name? Nicole. Nicole. And how about you? Grace. Grace. Grace, are you nine yet? How old are you? You're only seven and a half. What was your name? Micah. Micah. And where are you four from? California. What part of California? Camarillo. And you guys were here for the conference this weekend? Just stayed over Sunday night? What brings you in the water? Uh, we want to go from family fiery trials to family revival. I like that. Yeah, we want to watch Haman hung on his own gallows that he set up for Mordecai. I love that. That's powerful. He's like, I got this. That's what I was told. I got this all the time. You want to share anything? time with God that Jesus would just so saturate me. Um, four years ago today, I was released from the hospital after being diagnosed with MS when he was six months old. It was right when COVID happened and no visitors, so no baby. And I didn't think I could get my life back, but I believed that Jesus could give me the miracle that only he I just believed, I'll put it to you that way, and he has done so much in me, but I want the fullness that my MRI is clear that I have no anything lingering. Um, I wanna be whole Nicole, and to see our family restored because we have gotten a little broken. two years? What's going on? You have to breathe through your nose? Well, I have to breathe through my mouth because um, oh. like for like two years I've been having troubles breathing through my nose. For two years you can't breathe through your nose very well. Why? What's going on? Um, I had just had uh, nasal 
uh, polyps and sinus surgery, so I came here for that as well, to crush sinusitis and uh, nasal polyps, and we're going to break it out of the generations. Yeah, and, and I need a new back from heaven as well. Another back that he gets to heal. How much, are you in pain now? No. Just throughout the week, it just starts getting sore. Like, how much pain would you say it, it hits this number? Zero is nothing, 10 being very, very painful. Yeah, it could hit like 10. Yeah. Like multiple times throughout the week or just once a week? It's been a little bit better lately, but yeah, I'm ready for a, for a zero for ongoing. Jesus paid for this, man. He paid for this. Yeah. We get to receive it tonight. Do you smell? Do you smell?
on the end. What is your name? Joanna. Joanna? Yes. Uh, Yasmin. Yasmin. And where are you two from? Seattle, Washington. Wow. Came all the way from Seattle, Washington. We weren't gonna come, but you weren't gonna come. I didn't know you guys have this here. We were. Um, yeah. I was trying to get the Greece trip, so I entered the raffle. We're ultra, ultra global raffle. Ultra global did a did a. A raffle. Oh, okay. And they gave away a trip to Greece. But you ended up with a trip yes. to Dawsonville. And I was sitting and praying in the car and I said, God, if you want me to go on vacation, I'll go. But whatever you have for me, I'll take it. And and at the last minute, Jeremiah announced um, that he'll be doing a conference. And he said apparently it wasn't announced. And he pulled my name out. So. And so you're here and you're in the water. What brings you in the water? Um, I'm believing to be completely brand new. Um, to have a new heart, to be whole, so that I can love God wholeheartedly. That's great. Um, for a new spirit, so that I can see Him rightly without like my past and trauma, and for a new body for healing. Because um, I got in an accident, so my shoulder has been bothering me for like eight years. Are you in pain right now? It's not pain, it's just like every time I roll it back, it like cracks. Do you know Jesus loves to heal backs and shoulders and knees and yeah. all that? You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, and also, can you lift it all the way up or no? I can lift it, yeah. What can you not do? We carry trauma in this area. Kind yeah. Of emotional trauma. You tired of carrying that trauma? Yes. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. God. But it just pursues us. Oh. Well, there's somebody. There's something else pursuing you tonight. Absolutely. He's running after you. He has fire in his eyes and a sword in his hand to cut away every foul thing, every limiting thing, all the trauma off your life. That thing that's been tormenting you when you lay your head on the pillow, when nobody else is around, you're there. And he said, I, he said tell her, I've seen, I've seen, I've heard the cry. I've seen the tears. And he wants to deliver you once and for all from that how about you how about you yeah this is, this is yeah done. she's not done okay. <laughs> um and then um i started having allergies uh last year and i was like bedridden for a year because i just kept coming back every month and i couldn't leave the house and also like um i have like generational like hormonal imbalances which causes a lot of problems in my skin so i'm just praying for skin that's like yes. white as snow Jeremiah, when he was speaking, he spoke a lot of the things that the Lord has been putting in my heart, and I have it written down, so every time he would say it, I would just be like, oh, I have that written down, and I literally drew a new a paradigm, I'm, you know what that is, yeah, okay, I drew a paradigm in my notebook, and I, and I realized, I said, Lord, there's no way that I'm going to get it with the way that I am. I just need a new mind and a new heart because what the Lord has for me, I cannot see it, but I can feel it. And, and he draws me, but there are things holding me. And he has been healing my heart. Um, but the enemy, he pursues me. Even one of the nights here at night, I was battling. It was coming at me and I would wake up and just, um, and it said, I asked, what right do you have? And it said generational curse. Um, so we have a lot of generational curses that have not been broken. And I stand for my side and for my children. And she's here for her father's side because <laughs> she comes from him um, as well as me. Um, and I have three boys and the enemy is just pursuing them, especially my oldest. And all of the oldest boys in, in my mom's family, um, and my mom's oldest my my sister's old like the enemy just yeah the first boy he's just like they're all just been they're very talented and um um have big hearts but the enemy's just been pursuing them my son was born just very colicky lots of stomach issues eczema um rejection constant um just the deep addictions and um deep father wounds which i believe both of you know my and her and my husband's family 
we both have that. It's a generational cultural thing. So we're ready to be done with that. Um, this is why the Lord has called us and he has commissioned us. And we stand here for our king because he already accomplished it on the cross and we're just here to receive it and that it would flow through us forward and backward and it would it would just cancel everything out in Jesus mighty name and it would completely transform us too that'd be great and my hips hurt that'd be great but that's a bonus that comes with the kingdom um I have twisted hips and I'm I've been telling Lord can you straighten me and I just want to feel him just go you know, because that's... Have you ever felt him do something like that? Um, I feel heat. I feel heat. Um, Are you in pain right now in your hips? I'm very sore, yeah, all the time. Okay. Yeah, in my shoulders. Watch your hips. Yeah. And is your, is your shoulder popping when you move it back? It still pops. It doesn't hurt when you pop it like that.
tell everybody your names. Susan. Larissa. Niles. And where are you three from? Uh, we're from Southern Illinois. Wonderful. Did y'all come down for the conference or yeah. just, okay, just stayed over? Yep. What brings you in the water tonight? Uh, for me, I just want um, just a fresh fire. Um, and I'm here. I mean, the Lord uh, confirmed a lot of things from the conference, spoke a lot of things to me. Um, one thing I... Um, I want my voice back. Like, I feel like the enemy stole that at a really young age, and I'm coming for that. I'm taking that back um, because, I mean, I was created for such a time as this. I have, you know, kingdom work that needs to be done, and I, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, well, I think, um, you know, the Lord was kind of just telling me to stand in the gap for my dad. Obviously, Niles is my stepdad, um, but he just deals with, uh, he has Lyme's disease, and he's just, yeah, I know, right? Like, oh. <laughs> but uh, just neuropathy, also that, and he's just, I think you guys can both say, he, oh, Lord help him, you know. But uh, also, um, this weekend, the conference was really good, and I think um, back at home, I feel like, um, I kind of just have the reputation of kind of like, you know, like the life of the party and all that. And um, I just want everything that happened this weekend kind of just to be like solidified and, you know, to carry that back at home and for people to not look at me and be like, oh, let's take her to a party. Let's do that. But I'd rather them just, just see Jesus through me. definitely want to be a Mordecai for my wife so she can have her voice. So I want to be there for her for that and support her. Uh, for myself, we were here for the Pastors and Leaders Conference and on the second night, I wasn't planning on getting in the water again, but then I decided I want to go in and the Lord told me no. And I said, why, why, why do you not want me to go in the water? And he said, oh, you want to meet me here in front of all these people but you don't want to meet me in the secret place. So he really has been working on me on that for like ever since. And it's getting better, but I just want that fire for that, that desire to just be in the secret place with him and that intimacy with the Lord. You know, so. Love that. Wow. All
Tell us your names. Kyle Corbin. Kyle and Lisa. Where are you two from? Virginia. Cumberland, Virginia. You guys attended the conference, I'm assuming, this weekend, or you just came for this for... Didn't even know there was a conference. <laughs> so many people came to us for the conference, I just assumed, so... But you just came down for the revival then. We came down to meet uh, Pastor Todd. He's going to be coming to our church uh, at the end of April. Awesome. Well, what brings you two in the water? I want a fresh anointing so I can take this revival back. All right. It's for anybody and everybody. So he would love to, to do that. I want a new heart. I want to be able to feel I haven't cried in probably four years. I lost my parents. lost my dad for three years ago and just lost my mom. And my heart's been hard. And I just want to be able to cry and feel, feel God again.
what is your name? Edward. Edward. Julia. Where are you two from? Stockton, Missouri. Okay. All right. But you're here now, and you're in Dawsonville, and you're standing in a pool of water. What brings you in? There's quite a bit of stuff. <laughs> She's better at explaining it than I am. Um, we want to stand in the gap for our children. How many? We have five between the two of us. Four of them have been diagnosed with heart conditions. Right, I know, yeah. Um, three of them have autism, and so going to church is a struggle, though. I know, I know, yeah. So we want to stand in the gap for them yep. to get them to go to church with us. So we got to, the girls, they are adults, but they go to Bible study classes. And then our son goes on Sunday nights with us. Um, our oldest is out of the house, but doesn't go to church at all anymore. Married and has two kids. So um, my stepson, he's my son. He lost his mom three years ago to a tragic car accident and has been on the wrong path since then. He's wrote a suicide letter, uh, ran away from home, the shoplifting. It's just been a roller coaster of events with him. Is this the one that's 18? No, he is 16. Do you have an 18-year-old? I, I have a daughter that's 18. What's her name? Kaylin. Yeah. Is she living with you? Or? Yeah. Yeah. She doesn't drive or anything. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then um, healing in my body. I've just, I've dealt with headaches and migraines for about three months now. Yeah. Let's gotta go. Gotta go. He's dealt with some back and neck issues. A lot of back and neck issues. Yes. Yes. And, <coughs> yep. That's right. Yes. And then, um, when Jeremiah talked about the house of prayer, this morning during prayer time, I had wrote down, built a 1,300 square foot house. And I even wrote down, it's not big enough for us and our children, but it is a house for worship and prayer for family and friends. And we already have three acres across the street from where we are to build it on. So I'm believing it's a house of prayer. And the 18 year old girl, her name is Kay. Kaylin. Kaylin. Doesn't drive. Yeah. And, and so what's going on with her? She has a very rare heart
What's your name? Heidi. Heidi? Mm-hmm. Where are you from, Heidi? Uh, I'm from Greensboro, North Carolina. Well, we're glad to have you. What brings you in the water? Well, I want, um, first and foremost, is um, one, uh, my heart's always been to be one with the Lord, to do His work, and to share the love of Christ. At 14, I told the Lord Jesus that I would love the ones that nobody loves. And um, I've been put to that, and it's not an easy task. <laughs> but So I want that, and I want that for my husband, too. And that um, healing for both of us. I, I want to leave here not the same. I want a radical encounter with Jesus. And then from, uh, I fractured my finger. I've had a couple of falls over the last six months. And so I've had neck injuries, back, a hip, um, fracture finger. And so I'm not sure what's causing the falls, but I fell in the rain at, at our church service. But, um, so I know why I fell. I hit the lip of a sidewalk, but it just seems like um, one attack after another. Random, rare stuff since COVID, both me and my husband. There's a fogginess, not clarity like we used to have and um, since we've had COVID. So I want all that cleared out, all that fogginess. And leth he's more leth lethargic than I am. I just keep going and press through. <laughs> Are you in any pain right now? I, just a little in my hand. Um, in the, the one I got the fracture on in the palm of my hand and so I also have um, through this they found that I have bone spurs on both knees so I want to be able to kneel again to pray rather than sitting in the chair like I have had to hmm. where's your pain level zero to ten ten being the excruciating uh, it's more like two okay. mm -hmm. and I have a high tolerance of pain I'm <laughs> so but praise God he's he's been good He's been so good to us. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes.
anybody praying for you. I don't anybody laying hands on you. Jesus is laying hands on you in this moment. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. So we give you glory ahead of time, Lord, of what you're about to do. What is your name? Shelly. Shelly, where are you from? New Jersey. New Jersey. <laughs> what brings you in the water? Um, I've had a lot of, um, I, I just haven't been able to get rid of this weird, like, affliction in my life, like, intense and, like, pain, infirmity, surgery. I think I've had 30 surgeries in the last 10 years. Well, that's gotta go. And, and I, I've, even though I've done deliverance, inner healing, all this stuff, I can't seem to get over this trauma that happened 30 years ago from my di divorce. Um, and, be, and the thing that um, I know God, you're either in God's, uh, the kingdom of the son of his love, or you're not, but the enemy has been afflicting me because when my husband left me when I was 24, I suppressed the voice of the Holy Spirit, even though we were so tight. And I went and I just married the first unbeliever that abused me for the next nine years because the pain was a bigger monster than being abused physically and verbally. But I, the enemy's been tormenting me about that one sin that Holy Spirit couldn't handle it, you hurt him or I don't know, but I, I've done everything. I've declared, I've spent all my time in the word and prayer, but, um, it's frustrating. yes. And, um, and I have had multiple back surgeries and I've been a nurse for almost 30 years. And so I had to get the COVID shot and it destroyed my arm and my shoulder and I got shoulder surgery and it went into my neck and I can't use my arm properly. And I sprained my ankle a few months ago and just sick all the time. And it just, I, you know, I understand about authority and, but just, I, I don't know, I've broken off the generational curses and I've repented and I've forgiven, but the, it's, I don't know what it is. I just know that I said, God, I don't know what else to do anymore. And he said, baptism of fire. I have baptism of fire for you. So I just am believing him for a baptism of fire to just, yeah. to just heal me. Yeah. Just take care of it. I hope that he loves me. But I just know that he's all powerful. And I just... um. I didn't understand the last time I was baptized. I didn't really understand about it, but now I understand that I was crucified with Christ, that I'm dead to sin and alive unto God, that every sin was dealt with, and I'm resurrected with Christ Jesus. And and um, I, I just... Now you're preaching. Yes, he wants me to... <laughs> now you're preaching. Yes. That was, that was his purpose, though. <laughs> yes, amen. Give you your voice back. Yes. Yeah. Your identity. The whole thing. You're trying to figure out you.
What is your name? Sue. Sue, where are you from? New Jersey. All right. Your good friend, wonderful. Yes. What brings you in the water? I'm believing that the Lord's going to do many things for me tonight. The first thing I'm asking him to do is to heal my Aunt Dora, who had a stroke in the end of January, and the Lord brought me down to Florida where she lives to care for her. I've been caring for her for the last 30 days about, but I'm believing that the Lord is going to heal her eyesight, so I'm asking, I'm standing on her behalf here tonight and believing the Lord that she's 87 years old, and I know that God can heal her, and she does too, so I'm asking God to heal my 87-year-old aunt. I'm also here just because I am so in love with Jesus. He is the only thing that I know we are to pursue. And so I want the more of him, the all of him, the depth of him, the height of him, the width of him and his love just to continue to encounter me, reveal his love to me, reveal his face to me that I may see him face to face. That's my desire. I know I will meet him in these waters. And as I do that, I also know that he will reveal himself to my three boys who are prodigal children, but called by the Lord. And I'm believing for their salvation and their turnaround and the complete restoration of my entire family, my husband, our, my three stepchildren, my three born, my own children, our whole family. God's just going to continue to draw us together and heal our family, heal our lives, and just give us the more of him. That's what I'm here for. That's what you're here for. Amen. And all of heaven heard what you're here for. Yeah. Already moving on your behalf. Yeah. What's your name? Jeannie Hazel. And where are you from? Bloomfield, Missouri. Bloomfield, Missouri. Well, Why are you in the water? I want to break the generational curse of diabetes. Uh. It was on my grandfather. He went blind. Some of his sons uh, lost some parts of their limbs. My dad had it. He went blind. And now they're speaking it on me, type 2. And also I have a thyroid issue. They're underactive. I'm, I'm coming down with the healing tonight. 100%. And I just want my eyes to be better and my hearing to be better. And I know God can do it. I've been ex I know that comes with age. I know that. And I just turned 69 in November. Who told you you came with age? Oh, everybody says it. <laughs> I say something about it. Well, that, that comes with age. Well, I don't even claim 
to be old. That's just a number. You know, to me, I what take. What the same people that said you can't have babies when you're 99? Here comes Abraham. Oh, come on. <laughs> I mean, think about it. Who told us we couldn't have great eyesight in our hundreds? Who told us we couldn't make it to 100? Who said we couldn't make it to 120? His word says people that don't different. believe in God. Yeah. Don't believe that he can do it. Yes. I know that. I've been saying all day. I'm you coming. Back pain, do you? No. None. What is your name? Come on, you want to invite her in? Come on, bring your sister in. Bring sister in. What's your name? Sarah. Sarah. And? Kara. And where are you two from? Dexter, Missouri. Dexter, Missouri. What brings you both in the water? I'm at a Red Sea moment. What does that mean? I feel like it's been a lifetime of the enemy attack after attack after attack. And it keeps me in... What's that room that he kept saying? The accusation, the accusation room. room. Yeah, and, and, it, and it's like a victim mentality, you know. And, and then you have your joints hurt or your back hurts. I was born with half a vertebrae missing, and God healed me when I was 17. But it, 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 it still hurts, you know. It's like I want a complete restoration. God's, it's like the enemy tries to steal my vision, my hearing, my heart, crushed with my marriage. And, you know, um, I want to have the vision of how my God loves my husband. I need to have the vision of how he sees me. And I want that oneness with him so bad. It's been a decade almost of praying for the goodness of God to show up in our marriage. And I just want that so bad. I know God has a, a great thing he's going to do. And we're going to have a great testimony, but we need to have the fullness of Christ in us. And I want my vision back. My, I had LASIK eye surgery 
and two weeks after having it, I did eye drops, and I basically had like a welder's burn, and and so it got a little damaged. And it's like the enemy steals; he's not going to steal my vision. And I'm going to have this Red Sea moment, and when I go down here, that enemy is done. So, with your right eye, what does it look like out there? It's milky, milky, and little blurry and see my good eye is this one and it's getting worse so it's like no it's not getting worse. the right one's milky and it's blurry out there yeah yeah it's definitely blurry Been like that for how long five years or so yeah um so on the healing side um i'm stepping in for my husband um he just recently um last week and a half got a diagnosis that he was told he was diabetic and so with diet and health he can get that restored but we're not claiming that in him and so I've been laying the prayer cloth that I got back in January or no I've had longer than that that I got from here and so when we go to bed at night I just lay it over his side there and then um, and I'll always bring up my little grandson Emmett because he was born uh, at six months and with dysplasia and uh, well infection attacked his hip when he was in the NICU he was in the NICU for 105 days and so uh, he's got one leg shorter than the other but he's had surgery the pen is stained but I'm still seeing him completely restored so every time I come here I'm still believing in that miracle I know it's a process and God's got it and so I'm just always believing that there's more coming for him and uh, let's see, there was name. Oh, and of course, little Jamie. We brought Jamie here in, yeah. in January. Yeah. And uh, the latest diagnosis right now is that he, there's a blood clot on his lung. And so uh, there's just been a lot of attacks, but I'm still believing there's so much more that God's going to do with him. Yeah. I know he's healed, but because God's going to use him for a lot of things. So those are the healing things. Um, then on the personal side for me, um, I want to be confident and not be afraid to pray for people. Because I know that he wants me to, and I just hold back a lot of times. And so I just want that confidence, and I want that deeper intimacy with him. I feel like a lot of times when I go to have prayer time with him, um, I'm just like, why does it not feel so, I can't explain it, deeper um, where I can't hear anything around me. I just want that one-on-one -on -one where it's just me and him. I just want that deeper. That's what I'm seeking more of. <laughs> My husband um, lost his son when he just turned 16. And I don't know if that has anything to do with what he's going through. And um, he doesn't talk about it a lot, but I just want to, you know, pray for his heart to be healed, for him to receive all of God.
don't deny me. I mean, my gosh. That's why I love the Bible. What are your names? I'm Carolyn. Ron Book. Where are you two from, Ron? Bethel, Atlanta, down the south side, Peachtree City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What brings you here in the water? Go ahead. I want some healing for my body. What's going on? Okay, I've got high blood pressure and my back hurts. Is it hurting right now? Like on a scale of zero to ten, zero is nothing, ten being it. It's probably about a two. Just, and I um, am losing my hearing in my right ear. Would you like to get that back? Yes, yes. How bad is it? Like 50%? Or? Um, no, it's not bad enough for a hearing aid. But well, bad enough to be frustrating. It's bad enough to miss a lot of the conversation going on. Well, um, I would love to get this 
straightened out the, this arthritis. You know, I can, can't close my hands and I do a lot of woodworking and it's just, you know, hard to do it and it's painful by the end of the day and stuff. And um, so I love that. Um, you were talking about eyes um, from birth. I, this eye, I, I can see, but it's blurred. Like, you know, if I'm looking, I can see real up close. Yeah, okay, but back there, I can't read those signs and stuff. And so, your whole they, life has yeah, been like that. Yeah, they've never been able to correct it with the lens or anything. And so, those are the two things I would love. And there were mission pastors, and and we're, you know, mid seventies, and travel's getting harder. And we just we want vigor back in our bodies so we can keep doing that.
window. What's your name? Jonathan. Jonathan, where are you from? Uh, originally from Texas, but I live in Meansville, Georgia, since 2016. What brings you here in the water? Uh, never been baptized. Never? Never. What, a, what an honor for us to be able to be part of this with you. Man. Yes. How old are you now, 32? 39. <sighs> That's going to pay off in the long run, man. Yeah. <laughs> you hated it. I mean, I ain't 65. Thank you. <laughs> You're an evangelist too, right? Um, yes. in the water just getting bapt, uh, baptized the after after yep for the first time i have to repenting i just want it to be that
Tell everybody your name. Joseph. Joseph, where are you from? Locust Grove. Locust Grove. What brings you here in this water? Um, when he when he was preaching about the, the childhood, or not the childhood, the trauma, the, the trauma, yeah, I've, I've been, um, since I was in the womb, they tried to get me. And um, it's just been one thing after another for a long time. And I've overcome, um, but there's still, there's still things that, that linger that I want to be, I want to be healed from in the last couple of years. Um, I, I went through, through two divorces, um, and it, it just, it's, it's rough. So I just want to, I want to heal and be ready for what the Lord has for me. It's a laid down line. What's your names? Um, Marianne. Marianne. And Daryl McHouston. Daryl McHouston. Where are you two from? Uh, Lenore, North Carolina. Okay. Yeah, up here, close to Boone. Yeah. Uh, no. It's our anniversary. Well, happy anniversary. That's because you'll wait until after midnight. Yeah. <laughs> well, how many years? Oh, it's a long time. Two years. We're newlyweds. Beautiful. Yeah. Two-year anniversary. Yeah. You came here. You're in the water. <laughs> yes. Well, what brings you in the water? Why are you here? Um... Well, first of all, I want 
holy fire so that we will complete everything that the Lord has got for us to do and as far as healing (laughs) we need a top to the toes and I um, he's got metal in his neck and I'm believing it's going to come out of there I fell a couple of times and of my foot and neck, back. We kind of mirror each other in about every way. So. That's so true. More than anything else, the healing of the body is great. We need fire, more fire. We've got so much before us that we've got to do. We've got ministry before us. We need a fresh fire and we need anything that's holding us back. Let it stay under the water. When we come up, we want to be brand new and out there for the Lord. Whatever he has to do for us. New new life together. Mm -hmm. Uh, It just so happens to be. And also, I noticed some people are asking. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. I understand. I've heard people asking for healing for other people. I've got a daughter, 32 years old. She's come home to stay with us for a while because she broke her, her leg. She's getting her... She's getting to walk back together with the legs, but she's getting to walk back together with the Lord. Uh, so we, we need prayer for her if we can. Samantha. Samantha. Yes. Samantha. Yes. Lord, you would expedite her healing, Lord, for Samantha. That you would turn her heart, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, send angels, according to Hebrews 1.14, to minister to her as an heir of salvation. Yes. Quicken her body. Lord, she doesn't even have to work for anything. She just has to receive it. Yes. That she just looks down and something just beautiful happening in her leg. That's like, I, I, I didn't, I didn't expect that. But Lord, you have something, something so beautiful for her. We give you glory. Yes. And when you said. What's your name? Austin. Austin, where are you from? Uh, North Carolina. Okay. What part? Salisbury. Okay. Wonderful. What brings you here in the water? Uh, I want healing for my skin. I've had uh, just 
horrible rash that comes and goes for several years now and uh, just really tormenting. It's not like life altering, but just not fun to live with. Is it kind of itch or burn or anything? Constantly, yeah, and it's... Is it itching and burning now? Uh, yeah. Like on a scale of one to ten, or zero to zero being nothing, ten being excruciating, like itching and burning. Five. It's a five, okay. Right now it's at a five. Yeah. Anything else? Um, and I just want uh, clarity. I want. I know that God's been speaking and leading me in some things, and I just want to make sure that I'm obeying Him well and serving Him, serving Him Love best that I can. Love it. Love that.
tried to stay low on the girls, but she felt like she said, I want to do something. You know, Up that there way. She, <laughs> no, she hadn't had on since she's got out. I uh, yeah. So she's been walking guy. around and stuff. I'm not putting them on yet. <laughs> I walk out of the car until I start First driving. First time in how long? About 10 years.